seen the team that uh, won the toss to first choice here at the start of the game. Well, Ohio State has done it for a couple of weeks now, and the Buckeyes deciding to give their defense the first crack at it again to get them warmed up. Pat O'Moro preparing to kick off. And this game between Ohio State and LSU is underway. Slip Watkins at the two for the Bengal Tigers. He's got a big steam out to the 28 or 9 yard line. First and 10 for Tom Hudson and LSU from about the 30. All right, the offensive line, Norwood, Rodri, Kuti, Jim Hubix, and Pat Met at the right tackle. The receivers, Alvin Lee, Ronnie Halliburton, Tony Moss, a group of fleet receivers, and the backfield, Tommy Hudson, we talked about him, Eddie Fuller, and Victor Jones are the running backs. Hodgson is 6'3", a 195-pound junior. First play from scrimmage, Eddie Fuller snowed under at the line of scrimmage. Buckeyes defensively have Showalder, Mike Sullivan, and McCready along the line of scrimmage. Your linebackers are Zizakovic, Gerd, John Sullivan, and McRae. In the secondary, the corners are Smith and Dumas. Brown and Peel are the safeties. Second and ten for LSU. Man in motion with Fuller. Hodgson on a sprint out with time. Completion, go to the 38. And the Buckeyes, John Sullivan delivered a hit right at that point. Also there was Jim Peel. Lee got blasted, Paul. Lay coming out of the slot and sort of hooking up into the short zone. He'll make this reception as Hodson rolls to his right, deals the ball right into him, slips an Ohio State tackle at that point, but takes a big hit from number 57, John Sullivan. What a hit. The play was good enough for nine. Third and one. First down LSU to the 43-yard line. Showalter stopped the ball carrier. But Fuller managed to wedge out about four. First down, Bengal Tigers. McCray assisted. This Fuller, Paul, has over 200 yards in the two games as we see Greg Fry warming up on the sideline. Greg Fry, tough time last week, but he's getting his elbow loosened up right for today's action. Tim Rutledge has entered for Ohio State at strong safety for an injured Jim Peel. Hodgson throw is an errant one in the vicinity of the Ohio State 45, second down and 10 for LSU. Buckeyes seem to be charged up at the outset of this game, Paul. Well, they're certainly not waiting for anything to happen. The Buckeye defensive <laughs> 11 has come out here and is playing very tough and hard-nosed football. LSU, a very poised and experienced offensive team. So far, Tom Hodson is just moving the offense right along, and he doesn't seem to be phased, but we'll see what happens as the action keeps going. Jay Egloff directly behind Hodson. He gets the handoff. Egloff for several yards to the 49. Short of the first down by five. Jim Peel tripped up the ball carrier. Egloff is 36. He shares running back duties with Victor Jones. Third down and between four and five needed for a first down. The Buckeyes have sent Vincent Clark onto the field as the nickelback. Hodgson has completed 60% of his passes in his career at LSU. Plenty of time. He's hemmed in. Down he goes at the 49. Mike Sullivan was the first scarlet-shirted Buckeye to greet Hodgson, who could not find a receiver. LSU has given Hodson outstanding protection all year long. This time, Hodson can't find any receivers open downfield. He's forced to move up into the pocket. Sullivan makes the tackle on him. The Bengals will have to punt the football. Rene Bourgeois punting to Bobby Olive at the 10. Bourgeois, who's eighth in the country in net punting, hits a short one. Olive tossed it up. LSU football at the 16. Or at least the Bengal Tigers think so. Yes, possession LSU. 
a week ago, Paul, early turnovers set the tone of that game. Let's hope uh, it's not a repeat of last week. Olive coming under the punt, juggles it, is hit instantly, ball pops out. Number 72, Pat O'Neill, appears to be the Bengal who recovered the football for LSU. And then Jack Wright, you are. Turnovers were the key to that victory against the victory that Pitt had of Ohio State last year. They came early in the ballgame. Now we see another big miscue occurring inside of Ohio State's 20. Hey, you've got a feel for Bobby Olive, though. That's the first time he's caught the collegiate punt, and here at Ohio Stadium, it's a tough chore for anybody. Very difficult to do with a 90,000 crowd on hand. This is Fuller. Fuller threaded his way to the 12. And flags fly. The referee, Gil Marchman, tells us it's a personal foul against LSU. Perhaps Ralph Norwood was the guilty party. The Buckeyes shaken up. Buckeyes began the season, Paul, with a few leftover nagging injuries from the spring and practice in August. But uh, after two weeks of the season are reasonably healthy. Let's, let's hope this is not the loss of a key defensive player here. John Sullivan, the man on his back. Sullivan played his high school football at Lake Catholic in Timberlake, Ohio. Well, as you can see, the two teams have retreated to the 26. It appeared, Jack, that there was a personal foul on the play. Perhaps uh, the guilty party uh, could have been the fine left tackle of LSU, Ralph Norwood. Buckeyes knocked him out of that game last year. In fact, uh, knocked him out for the season. And he has said that uh, he was going to come into this ball game and... Uh, make a few people pay a price. Oh, well, we're glad to see that. John Sullivan walking off on his own power. Mid-season last year, Sullivan uh, underwent surgery. And is back starting for the Buckeyes this season. And hopefully will return. Second down and plenty for LSU. The pass is juggled and caught at the 21 by Halliburton, the tight end. Brian Vinio corralled him. The tight ends, Paul, don't figure too often in Hodson's pass offense, do they? Hodson has been throwing exclusively to the wide receivers, sometimes to the backs, but Buckeyes apparently doing a good job of covering. He's had to deal the ball inside underneath the coverage for tight end Ron Halliburton. Halliburton stopped by Benio on the play, also received some assistance from Vince Park. Third down for LSU. They must reach the six for a first down. Vincent Clark is in as the nickelback. Buckeyes show blitz, but don't come with it. Hodgson arching it to the end zone, too long. Vincent Clark on the coverage of Tony Moss. Moss number six can do a 4-5-40, but Hodgson just simply threw that one out of the end zone. No chance for Moss to catch up with that. Not very much room for Hodgson to put the pass into the corner. Moss was covered very well on that play by number seven, Clark. Buckeye defense do an outstanding job of holding LSU to a, an apparent field goal try. A 37-yard try by the left footer, David Browndike. He hooks it from left to right, and it is good. LSU draws first blood and leads 3-0. 10 minutes and 21 seconds left in the opening stanza. And the LSU Bengal Tigers are on top by a score of three zip. Buckeyes get a reprieve of sorts after Olive coughed up the punt. Buckeyes did manage to stave off Hodgson and the Tigers and force a field goal thanks uh, to a large degree to the penalty against LSU. Well, the Ohio State defense really did its job on that exchange of punts, which was fumbled by uh, Bobby Olive. 
certainly a strong team offensively like LSU will take advantage of every mistake like that. And to keep LSU off the board with a six-pointer, I would say Ohio State defensive 11 did an excellent job. Paul, certainly from uh, week two to week three, you've seen some improvement in that Buckeye defense already. Well, they're playing very aggressive football out there so far in the early minutes of this first quarter. They are simply not standing back there and playing a very cushiony-like defense. They're getting across the line of scrimmage. We've seen a couple of real hard, jarring tackles made by defensive members of this 11, and the Buckeye defense is really going after it. Hopefully the offense, when it gets its chance to come on the field, will demonstrate some crisp blocking and execution of its offensive plays. Coach John Cooper has said all week that uh, our defense may not have executed very well last week. In fact, as an entire team, we may not have executed very well. But he said the attitude is good, and that's important, very important indeed. Well, we've seen an attitude uh, early here in this ball game where the team has come out and it's enthused, it's emotional, it wants to play well against, uh, as we said, a very fine football team in LSU, ranked in either poll, uh, Associated Press poll, I believe, eighth last week and, and ninth in the United Press International. So they're playing against a very top-notch football team, and the Buckeyes certainly feel that they have something to prove on the heels of last week's uh, stunning defeat in Pittsburgh. The two teams are preparing for the LSU kickoff. Brown Dyke will boot it to either Snow or Hicks. Overlooked, perhaps, in that Ohio State uh, loss to Pittsburgh a week ago was the outstanding performance by Carlos Snow returning kicks, although any head coach uh, doesn't like for his team to have to return five or six kickoffs in one game. <laughs> well, Coach John Cooper said he was pleased with the fact that the kick return team did play very well and get good field position and, of course, had that 100-yard scoring effort on the part of Carlos Snow, but is that that's the kind of statistic that you don't like to be a leader in the category because it means that the other team is kicking off to you too much. In fact, last week, Snow broke Hopalong Cassidy's record for most uh, kickoff return yardage in a game here at Ohio State. Brown Dyke's kickoff is a short one, shy of Hicks and Snow, caught by Jay Cook at the 17. That's where he is dragged down. Jay Cook, who played his high school football at Purcell Marion in Cincinnati, wrapped up by Jay Egloff. The Buckeye offensive line, Mike Curry, Davidson, Jeff Ulenek, Greg Zakharoff, and Tim Moxley. And the receivers for the Buckeyes, Ellis at tight end, Segan Thaler split in, and Edwards at the flanker. The backfield, Fry, quarter, Carlos Snow tailback, and Scotty Graham gets the call at the fullback substituting for injured Bill Matlock. Edwards in motion across the formation. Fry still has it. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. A deficit of one on that play. Darrell Phillips smothered Fry at the 16. Defensively, LSU has Dunbar, Phillips, and James up front. The linebackers are Sancho, Osbury, Harmon, and Hill, who led LSU in tackles against the Buckeyes last year. And Young, Bice, Jackson, and Mays comprise the secondary. Jackson, the lone returning starter in the LSU secondary. Second down, 11. Carlos Snow breaks the tackle, gets to the 18. Third and at least eight coming up. Buckeyes came right back with the misdirection play that they opened the ball game with when it was an apparent miss signal by Carlos Snow and also uh, by Greg Fry. Those are the totals for Carlos Snow last week. Good ball, well, for the season thus far. Playing excellent football. 83 yards rushing, one TD on 17 tries. Carlos is averaging about 4.9 yards per try. Buckeyes, flash two receivers to the right, out of your picture to the top of the screen. Third down. Here's a completion to Bernard Edwards to the 28-yard line. 
Ron Sancho tackled Edwards, who hauled in Fry's aerial. Good enough for a first down for the Buckeyes. Good protection on the play. Very high percentage pass play with Edwards just coming underneath about four yards under the coverage, making the catch, getting upfield, and making the first down. Buckeyes want to try to control this football, something that they were unable to do a week ago against Pittsburgh. Greg Fry, 6'2", 195-pound sophomore from Cincinnati St. Xavier. Buckeyes, a little operating room now. Olive in motion. Snow sweeping left end. He broke a couple tackles for eight yards to the 37. Eric Hill knocked him down. 16 left in the first quarter. Good blocking at the point of attack as the Buckeyes clear the way for Carlos Snow. Harmon, number 58, takes a crack at Snow and right at the line of scrimmage, doesn't get him. Eric Hill, the outside linebacker for the Bayou Bengals, finally bring Carlos down. From the I formation, second down and two. This is Graham butting heads with an opponent at the 39, then shoved backward. His forward progress may have gotten him the first down. Good game, a game for Scotty Graham last week. He touched the ball four times and gained 30 yards, three rushes and one reception. Jackson and Osbury teamed up to make the hit on Graham as the chains come in. I was very impressed with Scotty Graham being a freshman jack on one situation last week in which Pittsburgh was blitzing. Uh, Scotty Graham knew what his assignment was, picked up the blitz immediately as a pass receiver on that particular play, getting out in the flat, making a nice 18-yard gain of the play. Normally, you don't think first down right there for the Buckeyes. You don't think freshmen ha can take on that much of an offense so early that they're going to pick up all the little intricacies in that offense, but uh, Scotty Graham did it very well, and of course he's starting this ball game, so he definitely has the confidence of the coaching staff. Well, Ohio State Sports Information Director Bill uh, Steve Snap describes Graham in the media guide as a diamond in the rough. <laughs> and uh, with a little more polish, he could be a fine fullback at Ohio State. Fry, short pass, Carlos Snow. Across the 50, or I should say Graham, to the 46. I'd say, Paul, that we're talking about Scotty Graham at the right time. Well, we're just talking about the kind of confidence that the coaches have in Scotty Graham, but Greg Fry going to him more and more as a receiver has confidence in him, too. Fry getting good protection again and throws underneath the coverage to Scotty Graham. Graham evades one tackler gets downfield and a couple of bangles have to bring him out mike bays got some help on that play from verge alberry along with greg jackson buckeye offense on the move fry sprint draw to snow stays on his feet for about four maybe the 42 of lsu rudy Harmon, an inside linebacker had help from jamie bice on the stop Carlos played his high school football at the Cincinnati Academy of Physical Education. This LSU defense, Paul, doesn't blitz very much. They play what they call a standard defense, Jack, or vanilla defense. It's what you see, as they say, is what you get. Vanilla? Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they don't do any exotic things, not a lot of blitzing. They just play standard coverages and standard defenses up front. They let their talent speak for itself. Draw play. This is Snow. There is a penalty marker. First down, Buckeyes, 31 of LSU. Look at Snow go here. Draw play, good blocking at the point of attack. Davidson, number 50, is out ahead of Snow. Gets a good block on Hill. Snow cuts up inside, bounces off two tacklers. Stopped by Aubrey and cornerback Jimmy Young. Signal by Gil Marchman, official against the Bucks. Ohio State uh, partisans let down a bit, thinking that perhaps LSU may have piled on after the whistle had blown, but uh, Gil Marchman 
that uh -uh, it goes against the scarlet and gray and that's going to wipe out a nice jaunt by snow yeah that's a tough break for the Ohio State offensive team Buckeyes were moving the ball extremely well it's going to put them back into the hole considerably near the midfield mark and because the foul occurred at the end of the play the Buckeyes are now confronted with first and 25 from the 46 well, again, unfortunately, we are seeing the infraction, some penalties that have hurt the Buckeyes, and, of course, the one fumble on the first punt. Buckeyes had seven penalties for 75 yards a week ago. Fry shoots it in the left flat. It bounces to Ellis at the 41. Jamie Bice was in the area for LSU. Second down and 25. Clock stops at 6.07 left. First period, 3-0 LSU. Jack, just as uh, we kind of expected in talking really before we started this ball game, LSU, for the first time in that situation, had a blitz with number 54, Eric Hill, blitzing from the inside position, from the outside linebacking position inside. So they're going to blitz. And it's going to be in specific situations, but they're going to blitz today. Well, Syracuse and Pittsburgh both blitzed a little more than they usually do. This is Snow weaving for about two or three to the 43 of the Bengal Tigers. Clint James was in there on the tackle of Carlos. Eric Hill assisted. Third down and uh, at least 20 yards to go for a first down. Third and 22 for Ohio State. Two-run Robinson has entered for Daryl Phillips at the nose for the Bengal Tigers. Play late in coming in for the Bucks, who are now down to 12 seconds on the play clock. Buckeyes must reach the 21 for a first down. Fry throws it short to Snow on the run. Drag down at the 35. Rudy Harmon latched on to Carlos. Pulled into the turf. Another penalty against Ohio State coming up. Interesting decision here for LSU. Do you take the penalty? Give the Buckeyes another third down try? Or yeah. do you saddle the Bucks with fourth and uh, about 12 at the 35? I would believe that they would take the penalty to push Ohio State back even further. It looks like it may be a major penalty and uh, force Ohio State to uh, kick the football after maybe one more try. Here's it looks like it's going to be holding called against Ohio State. That's exactly the indication of the official right there. Force the Buckeyes back into a deeper situation and play pretty soft defense. Uh, maybe yield a little bit of yardage and uh, then force him to punt the football. So John Cooper's Buckeyes are now faced with third and 32 from their own 47. 450 left in the first quarter clock running. LSU three Ohio State nothing. Graham and Snow behind Fry who has Segan Thaler split far left. Olive was split right. Fry steps up in the pocket. To lose a couple Tigers is tripped at the 49. So Jeff Bowman in the punting unit will come on. Carl Dunbar, the man face down at midfield. Dunbar, the Bengal Tiger, who blocked Ohio State's last-second field goal down in Baton Rouge last year. He also happens to be the LSU Tigers' best defensive rusher. A loss of Dunbar would really hurt them. Bowman averaging a little over 39 a kick, sails it inside the 10, and it takes an LSU bounce, and... Scoots on into the end zone, and the Tigers will start first and 10 from the 20, leading 3-0 with 4.08 left in this first quarter. 
Buckeye offensive line on the sideline, Ohio, uh, on the Buckeye sideline, Paul. I'd say the offensive uh, unit has uh, shown significant improvement over last week's performance already. There's been a tremendous amount of improvement, certainly in the play of the offensive line. Uh, they're firing off the ball well. The running backs getting good room to run the football. Coach Cooper right there giving them some additional instructions. They're also doing a great job of protecting Greg Fry up to this point. Although LSU did get some pressure on him on that last play from series of that last offensive series. But basically, Ohio State has shown they can move the football. However, the Buckeyes have shot themselves in the foot with penalties, uh, fumbles, and infractions of that nature. We might note uh, that the Buckeye offensive lineman who got the starting call in place of Stasniak today, uh, Mike Curry, is making uh, just his uh, fifth appearance in an Ohio State game, but he saw a lot of action with the first unit in the spring when Stasniak was out with Mono, so it's it's not like uh, Curry is, is totally new to this Ohio State uh, first team. Well, so far he's played uh, fine in this ball game. He's firing off the ball, doing a good job in pass protection, and so, as you said, Jack, he's not exactly a neophyte. He's seen some action before. Moss, the man in motion. The ball carrier slips down behind the line. And it was Slip Watkins. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Slip got his feet going a little bit too fast that time. Tried to make a radical cut as he was going to the left and couldn't keep his balance. Slip Watkins is the fastest man on this LSU football team. Uh, qualified for the Olympic trials, but they had a tough time beating the likes of Carl Lewis in the 100 meters. Watkins sweeping to the near side. He was hit initially by Dwight Smith. And then a host of Buckeyes came up to meet him. Andy Gerd assisted Smith on the hit. Ohio State defense has five defensive backs in. Bucks employed the nickel very seldom in week one, but as they are gaining experience in the secondary, they're showing the nickel a little more often now, Paul. Nickel apparently has presented some problems for Hodgson. It is incomplete at the 30. Andy Gerd put a good pop on the receiver. Cliff Watkins was uh, not pretty hard by Gerd. Nickel defense is presenting some problems for Hodson to find receivers. This time he goes over the middle to Watkins, but he can't get the ball to him as Gerd is there along with some assists from John Sullivan. Buckeye defense held the Bengals again. Bourgeois at his 10 to do the punting. And he puts a good lick into it to the 33 where Olive Fair catches. Heads up play by Bobby Olive Paul, who had a ring of white shirted Bengal Tigers around him. That was probably a fine decision by Olive. Initially mishandling the first punt, electing to make sure by calling for a fair catch and uh, coming up with the catch and giving the ball Buckeyes possession of the football in good field position. There is Mike Archer, Paul, who is in his second year at LSU. And he tutored uh, under the likes of uh, Arns Barger and some other very good ones. Well, Mike Archer is the head coach with an outstanding record of 12-1-1 and while at LSU. Of course, he's only been there one year, but he's a young guy, and, and the people down at LSU really like him. He did tutor under Bill Arnsbarger, considered one of the finest defensive minds in pro football when Arnsbarger was the head coach at LSU. And, of course, Arnsbarger left to go to... Uh, University of Florida as the athletic director and once Hans Barger headed that way it didn't take the officials at LSU long to tap young Mike Archer and he has proven to be a wise choice in that uh, he has produced a very fine first season and has these Bayou Bengals a top ranked team in his second year. Buckeyes produced uh, 
one of the two blemishes on LSU's record last season. Ohio State tied LSU 13-13. LSU's only loss, 22-10 to Alabama a year ago. Coach uh, Archer, formerly three-year uh, defensive coordinator at LSU. And a good one. Uh, as I said, Bill Einsbarger, the man that Archer studied under, is considered one of the finest defensive coordinators uh, in the National Football League. And you can see... Arnsbarger's influence in the style of defense that LSU plays today. One that doesn't blitz very much, kind of conservative, but very solid and makes few mistakes. A vanilla def uh, defense, uh -huh. right? A uh, vanilla defense. Uh -huh. First and 10, Ohio State, 33. Fry still has it. Throws it low for Ellis at the 40. Well, Greg Fry, who had a very sharp first game against Syracuse when he was 12 for 17. A little off target here in the opening stand today. Not much of a target to throw that time to. Jeff Ellis, number 89, was going from left to right on the field, but he was covered very closely by Rudy Harmon, the fine inside linebacker of LSU. Buckeyes have employed two tight ends, Palmer and Ellis. This is Carlos Snow between right guard and tackle. And he sported ahead for three yards to the 37. Harmon and Osbury teamed up to make the stop of Carlos. Under two and a half minutes left opening period, 3-0 LSU. The Buckeyes are in a definite passing situation, third and six last week against the University of Pittsburgh. The Panthers blitzed almost in every situation of a third in possession. LSU does not have that characteristic, but there's nothing to say that the Bayou Bengals won't blitz in this situation. Three seconds on the play clock. Fried just gets the snap in time. Shoots it complete. First down, Jeff Ellis. Eric Hill, the Bengal Tiger, mad at himself for not getting a hand in front of Ellis. First down, Bucks. Greg Fry on a straight drop back action deals the ball into Jeff Ellis. Ellis coming from right to left makes a fine catch. The LSU linebackers take a step up, then they clear out. And that is Hill and Harmon supposedly on the coverage of Jeff Ellis, but neither do a good job. And Ellis whips two men to make the catch in the first down for Ohio State. Fake to Snow. Fry's pass for Ellis is no good at the 50. As Ellis was stumbling into the flat and was unable to lift his head up and get his eyes on the football as it passed by him to the turf. Incomplete. Never really had balance, Jack. He, as you said, coming out of his break was stumbling and uh, never had got his head up and turned around to see the football as it was coming in his direction. Unfortunate because he was wide open on the play. Palmer and Ellis again are the two tight ends. Graham and Snow split behind Fry. Fry still has it. In the flat, this is Graham. Shoved to the sidelines at the 47. Jamie Bice on the hit for LSU. Under a minute and a half left in the first period. Buckeyes will be confronted with third down and seven from the 48. Jack, I'm really impressed with Scott Graham's ability to catch the football. He showed fine hands on that reception right there. Seems to have a lot of confidence for a freshman player. And I think the Buckeyes are going to enjoy his versatility of a runner, blocker, and pass receiver. He averaged 10 yards per carry as a senior in high school in uh, Long Beach, New York. Third down, Buckeyes must get to the 41. Wide open, inside the 35. Jeff Ellis on the receiving end, tackled by Verge Osbury. 
straight drop back action. Number 54, that's Eric Hill. He's blitzing. They also blitzed number 52, Ron Sancho. However, Fry dealt the ball off to Ellis out in the flat. Ellis made a fine game. He was stopped by Jim Young, who says LSU won't blitz. That time, they blitzed both linebackers from the outside. First and 10, Ohio State. This is Snow looking for an avenue. He can't find one. And he's covered at the 33 by Clint James of LSU. Although we didn't see Carlos at his best on that play, Paul, he is an example of an outstanding blend of power, speed, balance, Got a great future ahead of him here at Ohio State. I think a number of defensive players certainly see him as an outstanding player, just as you see it too, Jack, because he's made a lot of things happen. Fry. This is Graham. First down. Scotty Graham, number 35. The 5'10", 210-pound freshman. From the ground level shot, coming right at you in the camera. That's number 35, Scott Graham, coming out in the flat. He takes this pass from Greg Fry. Gets upfield. He's stopped by Eric Hill. The fine linebacker from LSU. And that catch and run by Graham brings the first quarter to a close here at Ohio Stadium. It's LSU 3, Ohio State nothing. We'll be back with more Ohio State football in a moment. Gamer with Paul Warfield back at Ohio Stadium in Columbus. We're seconds away from the start of quarter number two. Fans are on their feet. As the Buckeye offense has ignited the crowd here at Ohio Stadium, first and 10 Ohio State from the 20. Paul, the Buckeye offense has not scored a touchdown in, what, seven consecutive quarters of football. The second half against the Syracuse, well, Carlos Snow ran the kickoff back last week, but that wasn't produced by the offensive unit. But uh, the last half of the Syracuse game, the four quarters last week, the first quarter today, I'd say the time is right to punch one in. Well, Jack, I have to say they're due also to score a touchdown offensively. This offense certainly needs it to reestablish some of its confidence that may have been lost as a result of uh, last week's football game. They've been moving the football very well against a very talented defensive unit. However, they've been causing or having little mistakes occur to them at a critical period in that first quarter to keep them from perhaps taking it all the way down the field and into the end zone. So at this point on the field, more than anything else, the Buckeye offensive unit must keep its poise, concentrate, and not have those small infractions stop it. They need not settle for a three-pointer here. You're so right. Ohio State head coach John Cooper said this week, we have just settled for too many field goals. Uh, five of them, to be exact, our goal line offense, our short yardage offense, down inside the uh, 25 or 30 yard line has got to crank out those first downs and the Buckeyes uh, have got a first and 10 at the 20 when play resumes. We can't settle for three. This part of the field, the mindset must be get the ball into the end zone by pass or by run, but first get it into the end zone. If that doesn't happen, then settle for the three pointer, but don't go down there looking to get the three pointer exclusively. There's Coach John Cooper coming into the foreground. Bobby Olive is split to the right of Fry. Out of your picture to the bottom of the screen. Jeff Graham flanked seven yards to the top. Fry zeroing in for Olive. A splendid catch by Bobby Olive at the one-yard line. Jack, we're just talking about execution. 
Execution down in a critical area of the field, and you get fine execution here. Short drop by Fry, slant pass to Olive over the middle. He goes down low, concentrating on the football, makes a great catch right at about the one-yard line. Ground level shot, as you'll see Olive come right into the screen right there. Look at him go low, keep his eyes on the football, and make that catch at the one-yard line. LSU head coach Mike Archer has asked for a timeout. Does this mean, Paul, he wants to change the flavor of his defense from vanilla to chocolate or strawberry? Or <laughs> well, I don't think so, Jack. They've been pretty successful. We said at the top of this ball game that LSU has only given up nine points thus far in this young season. That's pretty good defensive football. So uh, Ohio State still has to get it into the end zone. And although the Buckeyes certainly are in good shape right now, first down on the one-yard line, I'm sure that you're not going to see this Bayou Bingo foot defensive football team cave in, at least without a fight. LSU's lead of 3-0, a rather precarious one at the moment. Fine catch by Bobby Olive, who is noted for a soft pair of hands and on artificial turf, Cradling that ball just above the ground is perhaps a little more difficult than on natural grass. Well, that was all very important. Really, I want to get back to what I said just a little bit earlier. When you get down in this territory, you've got to come out with six corners. You have to have concentration, execution, and not make mistakes. That last play, the pass protection was there. Greg Fry did his part, a short drop. He set up perfectly, threw the ball quickly, Olive concentrating it on the ball all the way went down low to make the catch and that's the way you get into the end zone. Buckeyes Paul moved the ball in that first period about as well as anybody has against LSU all season seven first downs to one. Well LSU has given up a total of 214 yards a game the Buckeyes now have a total of 104 yards and we're in the early part of the second quarter. Two tight ends Cook the man in motion. Pitch back to Snow. He's got a lot of running room. Touchdown, Buckeyes. going in motion the quick pitch to Carlos Snow and you see him just sprint to the corner of the end zone out sprinting Harmon and Hill the linebackers from LSU for the Ohio State touchdown Scott Powell to hold for Omoro whose kick is on target and the Buckeyes lead it seven to three Snow punctuates the Ohio State drive by sprinting left in from a yard away, and the Bucks are on top 7-3 over LSU. Jay Cook in motion. You see him again. Greg Fry flipping the ball to Snow. Snow following, blocking from Davidson 50. Now just out sprinting Hill, number 54. Harmon, number 58 of LSU. Coming up trailing. Cannot get the Buckeye speedster as he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. A fine scoring drive by the Buckeyes who zipped 67 yards in 10 plays using a second over three minutes. Snow capped it as he raced in from a yard out. Let's give a lot of credit to Ohio State. Bucks offense has played very well in this game so far. LSU on the other side of the ball on defense, Paul looks a bit sluggish. Could they be a little, uh, oh, maybe a little uh, distracted with their top 10 ranking and their 2-0 record so far this season? I don't think so, Jack. Uh, again, looking at Carlos Snow, who's having fine ball game. Over on the LSU sideline, their coaches are trying to get their team fired up. 
LSU came into this ball game, even though they had the top ranking and so forth, uh, saying publicly, we've got something to prove because uh, we didn't feel that Ohio State really deserved that 13-13 tie against us last year. That's a good point. Yep. So uh, at this point, I think that the momentum is on the side of the Buckeyes, both offensively and defensively. Ohio State has played exceptionally well. Uh, of course, we go back to the early air on the punt of, of uh, Bob Olive, and uh, LSU, a fine football team, got the ball inside of the Buckeye 20, and they couldn't, couldn't move it. So uh, Ohio State's defense has shown that this can play very well the times that it's been on the field today, and the Buckeye offense has moved the football each time and may have stopped itself one time because of uh, penalties and infractions. The two LSU Tigers back at the goal line. Watkins and Fuller prepared to receive the kick from Omoro. And he drills it to Watkins at the two. And he brings it back to the 23. As the Buckeyes shut off the seam, James Bryant laid a shoulder into him. I don't believe that was 41, but it was 47. Not Bryant, but Patrick Rogan, who sped downfield to make the tackle. And LSU sets up shop first and 10 at its own 23. There's a quick pass in the right flat. Good for about seven yards. As Dwight Smith made the tackle on Eddie Fuller. Eddie Fuller, 33, a very durable tailback for LSU. LSU showed something a little bit different offensively on that last play, putting Fuller out into a wide receiving position and then screening the ball to him just to get some movement. Second down and three. This is Fuller. He's hemmed in. Down he goes. John Sullivan and Dwight Smith stopped Fuller cold at the 30. LSU Paul has been limited to one timeout, or I should say one first down. And the Buckeyes are on the verge of forcing LSU to three and out and a punt if they can come up with a good play on defense here. Hodgson to Fuller. He holds on at the 36. As Vincent Cluck really put a jolt on Fuller, who somehow managed to hang on to the football. Well, Fuller is a fine receiver. The Bengals will go to him out of the backfield, and that time they sent him in motion down the right sideline. Buckeyes employing the nickel defense again. Clark really smacked him, as you said, Jack, but Fuller had the poise to hold on to the football. And that completion gives Hodson just 22 yards passing so far. Rich Fremel has entered for Ohio State at a defensive end spot. Hodson sets up to throw wide of the mark at the 47. The receiver was on the ground and available. But Alvin Lee could not reach it. Hodson's throw a bit off the mark. Second and 10. Hodson's throw a little bit off the mark, Jack, but also Lee was unable to keep his feet as he started to curl in. He started to slide a little bit. The ball was thrown a little bit to his outside as he was breaking inside. Second down and 10 for the Bengal Tigers from the 36. 13-40 left in the second quarter. Buckeyes lead 7-3. Fuller in motion. Hodson. His pass may be deflected, but caught anyway. A gain of about six. At least four yards short of a first down. Andy Gerd managed to latch onto the receiver. 
Buckeyes are doing a fine job in their secondary coverage. They're forcing Hodson to throw the ball underneath the coverage. This time to the back. Fuller coming out of the backfield. He doesn't get very much yardage, and he's tackled by Buckeye tacklers, mainly Clark. We're down to 10 seconds on the play clock. LSU needs four yards for a first down. Hodson, flat pass, juggled, incomplete at the 45. Again, Hodson on the straight drop back. He's looking for a receiver, getting some pressure, but elects to go to Eddie Fuller in the flat, but cannot get the ball to him. Fuller does catch it, but he juggles it going out of bounds. Dwight Smith was covering on the play. Rene Bourgeois back inside his 30 to do the punting for LSU. He has a wind out of the south at his back. It's blocked. It's picked up. Michael McRae. football at Roth and Dunbar in Dayton scooped up the block football Vincent Clark was the Buckeye who got a hand on the punt just after it left the foot of Bourgeois McCray scampered in with it Buckeyes lead 13-3 make it 14-3 Ohio State leads it 12-46 to go second quarter Well, you could really see it coming as the Buckeyes lined up 10 men on that front. And that 10 men front came through as Vince Clark, number seven, breaks up through the inside. Yes, Rene Bourgeois, Bourgeois, Hunt, and Mike McRae picks up the loose ball and scampers into the end zone for the touchdown. Mike McRae, very happy young man. Bourgeois back in deep punt formation. A low snap. He punts it. There's number seven. Vince Clark coming into the pitcher, making the block. Now Mike McRae takes the bouncing ball at the 20-yard line. He's off to the races, escorted by fellow Buckeye defenders. Gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Buckeyes score their second touchdown. First block punt of the year. And Buckeyes enjoying a lot of success here early in this ball game. <laughs> Michael McRae, a happy Buckeye right now indeed. Of course, McRae turned in a fingertip interception a year ago down at LSU, which uh, then led to Ohio State points. That was a big play in that game. And uh, this play here by McRae may turn out to be the key play of this game. Well, the Buckeyes were certainly lacking key plays in last week's upset over at Pitt. And today they're making key plays. Buckeyes total offense, 124 yards. The LSU at this point in the ball game, just 56 yards. But both offensively and defensively, Ohio State playing very heads-up football, emotional football, and aggressive football. Vincent Clark Paul, an example of the kind of speed Coach John Cooper uh, would like to get on the field more often. And he flashed in there and smothered the punter before that football got off the foot of Bourgeois. It's an example of the kind of speed you want on the kicking teams, but I think it's even a more prime example, Jack. Vince Clark has not played much until today. He has an opportunity to play today, and he's making the most of it. That's a good point. Clark, the man about whom we're talking, played his high school football with Carla Snow at the Cincinnati Academy of Physical Education. The last time the Buckeyes uh, blocked a punt, which resulted in six points, 
was uh, back in 1983, I believe, when the Darrell Lee blocked a Minnesota kick, which Cedric Anderson recovered in the end zone. Kickoff by O'Moro goes out of bounds down inside the five. Now, Amoro's strategy on that kick, Paul, was an attempt to use the corner of the field to Ohio State's advantage, but uh, he kind of cut the corner a little too finely, didn't he? <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, of course, that little guy that LSU has back there kind of bothers me <laughs> a little bit. Number two in their lineup, I believe his name is Slip, Slip Watkins. <laughs> He slipped a few tackles before, well, I'm sure. Well, he slipped a few tackles before, but uh, he has that great speed, and uh, he gets back up into the wedge very quick, and I think that O'Marl is trying to keep the ball low and sailing towards the ground so that uh, I give the uh, kicking team an opportunity to get down under it. The wind is blowing in the face of Amaro. Slight breeze out of the south. Amaro kicking off, and he belts it. This time, it's caught at the 10, and returned down the sideline. It's a big run back across the 50-yard line. This is Vincent Fuller inside the 35 to the 31. Well, Amaro followed your advice, Paul. He kicked it away from Slip Watkins. Buckeyes just didn't defend it very well, did they? Poor coverage on that kickoff. Not very good coverage. Buckeyes started bending in from right to left, allowed Fuller to get outside of the contain and just go right down that sideline. It was a little bit too easy. And now LSU is in good operating territory as the Bayou Bengals have an opportunity to start at the Ohio State 31-yard line. Buckeye defense will have to rise to the occasion one more time. This is Fuller, and he has stood up after a gain of one or two yards. And the Sullivan boys do a number on Fuller. Mike and John on the hit. Straight handoff to Fuller going up inside behind Rodrigue, number 68, but he gets absolutely nowhere in right yard, Jack. It's the Sullivan brothers there to make the stop. Second down and nine for LSU, which must reach the 21 of Ohio State for a first down. Play action. Hodson zips it up the right side. Open receiver is Moss. Spinning all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Bengal Tigers. <laughs> LSU striking quickly following the long kickoff return. Tony Moss, considered to be the big play man of the receiving core, is on the receiving end of this, re of this pass and then makes a fine run as he spins away from Dwight Clark, number 20, and a host of Buckeye tacklers and gets into the end zone. LSU right back into the ball game with that score. Here's the PAT by Brown Dyke. And it's good. And LSU has cut the Ohio State lead to 14 to 10. 11.47 left in the second period. All right, that's a look at uh, Tony Moss as he starts off the line of scrimmage and gets on the outside as he's hit by Peel and just hangs in that area out there in the zone area, waits for the football, catches it, and now he spins away from Dwight Clark, Dwight Smith, rather, and a couple of other Buckeye tacklers and gets into the end zone. The fake by Hodson to the back, and then he'll deal the ball out in the flat in the open zone area. Moss. He meets contact, spins away from Smith and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. LSU head coach uh, Mike Archer hoping that quick score was good tonic for his Bengal Tigers. 
who have been stymied for a quarter plus by this Ohio State defense. But following outstanding play by the uh, Ohio State punting team, a letdown by the Ohio State kickoff team. Well, Jack, a football team that is as good as LSU, there's an old thing. You don't want to let the bear out of the cage. Up to this point, Ohio State had contained LSU and made them work for everything that they had to earn. And all they had earned up to that, this point was a three-pointer. Then on the kickoff, the coverage team let down just a little bit, and you had that great return to put LSU in great field position. Two plays later, they're in the end zone. How's that saying go? Don't let the bear out of the or the Bengal, Bengal tiger out of the cage. <laughs> <laughs> a quick drive indeed by LSU. Using less than a minute. 31 yards, two plays. They had contained LSU and made them work for everything that they had to earn. And all they had earned up to that, this point was a three-pointer. Then on the kickoff, the coverage team let down just a little bit, and you had that great return to put... LSU in great field position. Two plays later, they're in the end zone. How's that saying go? Don't let the bear out of the or the Bengal, Bengal tiger out of the cage. <laughs> <laughs> a quick drive indeed by LSU. Using less than a minute, 31 yards, two plays. Hodson's pass to Moss finished it off. Hodson prefers to throw the ball short. Even the big plays for Hodson during his career have been the result of short pinpoint passes and then long runs. That's an indicator that LSU has mighty fine skill position players, people who have the capacity to make big plays. In other words, after they catch the football, they can go a long way with it. Brown Dyke is number four, kicking off with the win. And Hicks has it at the three. And he slid down at the 15. Jay Igloff, a backup uh, running back for LSU, who plays uh, a lot on special teams. Hurry downfield to cover up Hicks. Well, this is the kind of thing that you didn't want to see happen. Buckeyes now have the football on their own 15-yard line. It's not the best field position in the world to start an offensive series, so they're going to have to be kind of letter perfect down here. 11:41 left in the second quarter, 14 to 10, Ohio State. Scarlett Snow stretched out about five to the 21. Second down and a little less than five coming up for Ohio State, perhaps just four. There's the LSU vanilla defense. You see that Stasniak has entered for Ohio State at offensive tackle. First man through gets the football. It's good to see Bill Matlock back in. Matlock number 11, who was shaken up in the pit game, has recovered quickly. The senior from Beechcroft here in Columbus picked up a couple yards, leaving Ohio State too short of a first down. Third down and a little less than two, a long one, call it. Buckeyes need this first down to uh, re-establish control of this ball game. Not that it slipped away, but LSU has come back since that uh, last scoring drive. Pitch out to Snow, looking for room. He's thrown down at the 26. Very close to a first down. I think he's inches short. Eric Hill. Bulldog Snow to the turf. All depends on the official spot. Buckeyes employing the option play. Fry flipping the ball out to Snow. He gets contact. Hill has him as he crossed the 25-yard line. And he does come up a little bit short, Jack. And on comes the punting unit. Somewhat reluctantly. Play clock down to 13 and running. Oh, 
LSU calls for a timeout. The play clock had ticked down to five. And the Bengal Tigers take time. Each team has a couple timeouts remaining. Well, I should say LSU has used two. And the Tigers have just one remaining. Buckeyes still have uh, their full complement of three, according to that graphic. It's kind of interesting, Jack, that LSU elected to call timeout on that when the play clock was winding down. It's possible that LSU had an extra man on the field and to avoid the penalty being called, uh, went ahead and got a timeout to get that man off. As I recall, the Buckeyes were guilty of that a week ago. Well, it was, uh, then it certainly was a head, heads up play by Jim Young, number five, their regular cornerback, to see that they had 12 men on the field because they would have received a penalty and Ohio State would have kept possession of the football. That's right. Right now, they have the Buckeyes backed up. And so, even though it expended a timeout, it probably was worth it to use that timeout because the Bengals are going to get a good field position on this exchange of punt. Are you sure they're going to punt it, Paul? <laughs> Here it is. Bowman gets it away, a line driver. Bounding out of bounds at the 42. Jeff Bowman, transfer from Kent State, from Centerville, Ohio, trotting off. 9-24 remaining in the second quarter, 14 to 10 Buckeyes. So LSU on its second consecutive possession starts with good field position. Line of scrimmage, the 42 of the Bengal Tigers. Boy, the Buckeye defense uh, last week Paul seemed to have its backs to the wall virtually series after series. We don't want to get into that kind of a rut here today. Buckeye defense uh, had to start when LSU had the ball last time, you know, inside the 50. Offense just has got to get a first down or two or at least uh, avoid the mistakes on uh, the kickoff return as it did uh, on the last one. Well, the defense has played very well today. Of course, LSU is only one first down outside of being in what is called four-down territory across the 50-yard line. But uh, certainly Ohio State defensive unit has uh, played very inspiring football. Because John Cooper at the beginning of the ball game elected to have the defense come on the field first to set the tone and, and set the tone they did immediately and the offense very shortly after responded. And so... Buckeyes have played extremely well here in the first and second quarters of this ball game. Now the quest is for the defense to stop LSU again and give its offense a chance to get back on the field to get something started again. Buckeyes had the psychology of this game in their favor following the great touchdown, but it seems to have switched back to LSU's side, but not on this play as John Kaczerski makes initial contact with the ball carrier. Jim Peel finishes him off. Buckeye defense rising to the occasion with a good first down effort here. Inspired defensive play, Jack. Anytime you see tackles made across the line of scrimmage on the offensive side of the ball where Kaczerski was, you know that your defensive team is hustling. John Cooper has said he wants a defensive team that's giving 110% hustling all the time. That's exactly what Kaczerski was doing as he ran that play down from behind. Lights out football is what Coach Cooper calls it. Hodson still has it. Pat Thomas giving chase. Hodson scrambles out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Michael McRae was out there. 54, Pat Thomas from Centerville. Clock stops at 840. Third down and 10 coming up for LSU. Buckeye defense coming out and stopping LSU for no gain on two straight plays. We haven't seen Hodgson scramble very much, but the capability is there as you saw him run out of the pocket that time. He's a good athlete. He can do a lot of things very well. 
Short drop down the middle. Fine catch. The ball is loose. Dwight Smith has it. It's ruled incomplete. Ohio State fans booing. They thought that the receiver, Alvin Lee, had possession of the football. We said this ball game was characterized by Ohio State's hard hitting. Here's another hard hit as Lee goes high. Vince Clark again. Number seven is the guy who really smacks him. Makes him cough up the football. Very close call, but the officials rule it an incompletion. On fourth and ten, Bourgeois punts it to Olive at the 20. He breaks loose. At the 24, Olive is thrown to the ground out of bounds. Pat O'Neill was the first man downfield for LSU. Thirty-eight-yard kick by LSU, four-yard return by Olive. Graham and Edwards are split far left for Ohio State. Nobody split right. Matt Lock and Snow behind Fry. Fry in trouble. Lost it for Ellis. Jeff Ellis was available. He had the football in his hands for a split second. Perhaps he was thinking about the oncoming defensive back from LSU. Greg Jackson, who was in the vicinity, but it was Ellis's football to catch. Well, Greg Fry simply made a great play out of it when he made his fake and turned and looked downfield. He saw a big number 70 from LSU, Clint James, in his face. He had to deliver the football immediately with not much on it and made a great pass, but Jeff Ellis couldn't quite make the reception. Olive in motion. Fry, a little more time, swings it to Snow. He's pinned in and goes down at the 23. Verge Osbury cornered Snow. The play results in a setback of a yard or two. Third down and 12 for the Buckeyes. Perhaps closer to 11. This might be an ideal time for LSU to blitz. They've shown the blitz on two other occasions. In the first half, Greg Fry, eight completions and 88 yards so far here in the first half. Matlock and Snow are split behind Fry. Fry zips it down the middle, Jeff Graham. Jeff Graham, number 84, who played his high school football at Kettering Alder on the receiving end. An excellent catch. Watch the blitz coming. Number 52 will get to Greg Fry, but he just gets the football off to Jeff Grant. Fine pass, fine catch. Big play for Ohio State, third in possession. Buckeyes get out near the 50-yard line and in good operating room. The last position that Graham played in high school, Paul, was quarterback, so you know he's got a good pair of hands. That's right. And he displayed them on that play. Big gainer, Fry to Graham from the 49 first down. Matlock churning out about two or three. Rudy Harmon plugs up the hole. Second down and six or seven needed for a first down. Under seven and one half minutes left in the second quarter. Buckeyes have all three timeouts remaining. Graham split right. Edwards left. Fry looking over the LSU defense. Short pass to Matlock. Bill Matlock. Power his way inside the 40. 
Nice short passing game by the Bucks, giving LSU a dose of its own medicine. Play action with misdirection action on it. However, Green Fry under a little bit of pressure, but he throws very well to Matlock. Difficult throw for Fry moving to his left, throwing right-handed and into Matlock, number 11's hand. Fine play by the Buckeye quarterback and fullback. Boy, Matlock and Snow combined to give Ohio State a backfield, which is tough to knock off its feet. Excellent balance between those two. This is Carlos. He plows for five to the 34. Rudy Harmon spun him down. Clint James assisted. 6.20 left second quarter. Buckeyes 14, LSU 10. Carlos Snow from the eye position following fullback Matlock goes in the line, meets resistance, spins out to his right, gets a couple of extra yards on the play. Right you are, Jack. Carlos is very difficult to knock off his feet. Seems to spin instantaneously when he receives contact. Second down, close to six yards to go. This is Snow looking for an avenue, and he is shut down at the line of scrimmage. Rudy Harmon led the wave of white-shirted Bengal Tigers. It will set up a passing down, perhaps third down coming. Again from the eye formation, Snow taking this pitch, this time cutting back from right to left, but not very much room to run. A host of LSU tacklers led by Rudy Harmon there to stop. Carlos Snow, that's what Carlos looks like here in the second quarter. 12 rushes, 43 yards. And one touchdown. Buckeyes must get to the 28 and a half for a first down. Fry with some time. Fires it caught. Penalty marker down. Jeff Ellis, despite being held on the play, clutched the football for what appears to be a first down. It looked to me like Ellis was being held as he was striding to catch up with Price pass. That's probably the way the officials will rule it, Jack. Right now they're conferring at the field and also talking with Greg Fry. What we're seeing today offensively from Ohio State is we're seeing true team effort. Good protection, fine passing, and good receiving. Fry is spreading the football around, isn't he, Paul? Well, so far, seven different receivers have touched the football or caught the football today. That's an indicator of how he is spreading the football around. He did the same thing in the first game against Syracuse, which led to uh, Buckeye success. the play and have declined the penalty and the catch by Ellis puts the football at the 27 and Ohio State first down with 454 left until halftime Edwards in motion Carlos Snow sweeping short side three yards to the 24 Eric Hill stopped him. Corey Raymond assisted. Buckeye is electing to sweep to the weak side of the LSU defense. Usually one or two less men over there to beat if you can get that corner turned. Second down and a long seven. Buckeyes must get inside the 17 for a first down. Draw play, Snow, and he squirts out of the pile of the 19. And the five foot nine inch frame of Carlos Snow disappeared and then popped out for a significant level shot here of Carlos Snow taking his hand off on the draw play. Meeting some resistance initially and still keeping those legs churning and driving. And <laughs> as you said, Jack, uh, a lot of people seem to underestimate Carlos because of his height 
but uh, certainly he's got a lot of strength and he's very hard to knock off of his feet. Now Cut you on. see him, now you don't. <laughs> kind of. Mm. Timeout, Ohio State with 324 to go in the second quarter. Buckeyes have a third and four left for a first down. And uh, thanks to that second and third effort by Snow, are left uh, with only four yards needed here on third down. Buckeyes doing quite well on third down today. So far, the uh, five of seven, that's a real good statistic. Would like to make it six of eight right here in this situation. Again, Ohio State down inside of the 30-yard line, right at the 20 to be precise. And when you get down there, you're knocking on the door. You want to make sure that you get in. Open it up and get it into the end zone. So, again, the hallmark for the Buckeyes will be concentration and execution and get the job done. What's a good goal to shoot for for third down conversion, Paul? 60%, 50, 40, what's... What's well, you, acceptable for an offense in your mind? A good offensive team wants to be definitely over 50%, but in the 60, 65% range, anything up there is excellent. Three minutes and 24 seconds left in the second quarter. Buckeyes have two timeouts left. LSU has one. Football is nearly in the center of the field between the hashes. Edwards split 12 yards to Fry's left. Fry still in possession. Pass is back. Greg Jackson. Greg Jackson picked off the football after an LSU lineman got a paw on it. Big break for LSU. Fry faking into the line of Carlos Snow, rolling back to his right, getting some protection. The ball looked like it went off the helmet of the uh, LSU player, perhaps, and up into the waiting arms of number 35, Greg Jackson. The fine, strong safety of LSU in the Bayou Bengals really dodge a big bullet right there, Jack. Jack. This is Fuller. Breaks it for about eight yards. Penalty marker down. Andy Gerd wrapped his arm around the ball carrier and tossed him down. Personal foul against Ohio State. That hurts. It gets LSU out of a hole. David Brown coming in a little bit late on that tackle. The officials flag him on it, and Buckeyes will be penalized. And as you said, Jack, that penalty really hurts Ohio State as it'll move the football out to about the 36 seven yard line that gives LSU good operating room the Bengals have three minutes and 12 seconds left on the clock and that's plenty of time the way they move the football to get it down field in scoring position LSU has used two timeouts already so the Tigers have got one remaining first down short of the 37 of LSU. Three receivers to Hodgson's left. He dumps it off, penalty marker down. Eddie Fuller made the reception. Eddie Fuller. Two flags thrown in the LSU backfield as Hodgson had all kinds of time thanks to a holding by an LSU lineman. Well, LSU comes into this ball game boasting the fact that Hudson had not been sacked at all this year, but uh, perhaps maybe they've done it because of their ability to hold. 
No, they're fine protecting the offensive line. They have a tremendous amount of pride in protecting their quarterback. Buckeye secondary now includes Vincent Clark and Tim Rutledge. Clark from Cincinnati. Rutledge played his high school football at Youngstown East. So it is first down all over again for LSU. First and 20. Hodson dropping deep, screening it to the right. This is Victor Jones tight roping the sideline for about seven yards. Andy Gerd was in his path. Did you catch many screen passes when you played uh, halfback at Ohio State, Paul? No, I can't really remember catching any of the matter. <laughs> Passes, period. <laughs> Screen or downfield. They didn't throw much back in those days, is that right? That's right. <laughs> Hodson, plenty of time, a short aerial complete. Alvin Lee, short of the 40. John Sullivan corralled him. Third down and seven or eight yards needed. Looking at Sullivan taking his drop from his inside linebacking position, following the football and getting to the ball and making the stop on Alvin Lee. Good zone coverage by Sullivan and good reaction to the football. Third down and eight. Hodson fires complete to the 40-yard line of Ohio State. Alvin Lee turned around in the nick of time as Hobson's pass arrived just when Lee looked back over his shoulder. Big play for LSU that time. Hobson rifles the ball in the seam of the zone right over the ear of Buckeye linebacker Andy Gerd who does not see the ball coming right into the waiting hands of Alvin Lee. Big first down for LSU. And we are down to 125 in the second quarter. Hodson Shoots it up the right side too far. Tony Moss was scurrying to the sideline. But uh, his effort was in vain to catch up with that one. And it's second down and 10 from the 40. One minute, 18 seconds left. 118 to go, second quarter. LSU with a single timeout remaining. Moss and Lee flank far right, Fuller in motion. The catch is made at the 22 by Tony Moss. Hodson and the receivers are finding those seams. and electing to throw in the middle man in there, number six, Moss, as he just runs right straight down the field in the seam of the zone. Clark makes the reception. Very smart pass by Hodson. First down. Hodson throws at the sideline incomplete. As Moss caught the football, but he was out of bounds when he did so. Dumas and Clark were covering, and the incompletion stops the clock at a minute four second period. The Bengals are about in field goal range. Brown Dyke, their fine kicker, is good from about 45 yards, but they want to get more out of this guy. Victor Jones is behind Hodgson. Hodgson's pass, catch is made inside the 15 to the 14. Fuller wrapped up by Peel. Third down and two needed for LSU. LSU having to throw more to their backs today, but it's been a strategy that has worked for the Bengals. 
Hodgson rifles it. It is caught. Great catch at the three-yard line. Out of bounds is ruled. Alvin Lee was really belted by Vincent Clark. Lee may not have held on to the football here, Paul. This is pinpoint accuracy in between the zone. Lee makes a fine catch, but he really pays for it. Vincent Clark is right there on the spot to really wrap him. Well, the receiver, Lee, as we saw in the replay, did make the catch, but was ruled out of bounds. A break for the Buckeyes. And on fourth down and two, LSU sends on the field goal unit. 30 seconds to go in the half. Now the line of scrimmage is uh, marked at the 14. And the kick by Brown Dyke must travel 32 yards. And this is the angle. Oh, it's a fake. And it's a first down LSU to the nine-yard line. The holder, Chris Mock. The 6-1 reserve quarterback. Slipped through an opening and gained a first down. Number seven, Mock takes his direct snap, goes right in between guard and tackle, and he gets more than enough yardage for the first time. LSU does not call timeout, though. 15 seconds left. Hodson looking into the end zone. Wide open receiver, too far. The clock stops at nine. Fuller hauled it in, but he was a couple steps beyond the end line. They say Tom Hodson has a lot of poise, and of course the clock is ticking down. Here he throws a little bit off balance, but gets enough on the football. But as you see, Fuller is way beyond the end line in the end zone, and so the pass goes incomplete. LSU is going to try one more time for a touchdown, Jack, with nine seconds on the clock. Fires it wildly, incomplete. A break for LSU. The play took just six seconds, and the incompletion stops the clock at three. Well, it was really a heads-up play by Hodson, who knew exactly how much time was on the clock. He only had nine seconds to work with. He took a good look downfield, didn't see anyone open, started to move out of the pocket to the right. He then knew he had to get rid of the football and stop the clock, and so he threw the incompletion. Now the field goal try for LSU. This one, I would imagine, will be for real. Brown Dykes kick. Good. Clock runs out. Time expires. A thrilling first half here at Ohio Stadium. It's halftime. Ohio State 14, LSU 13. We'll return with more Ohio State football in a moment. Score is Ohio State 14, LSU 13. And hello again, everybody. I'm Jack Kramer with Paul Warfield here at Ohio Stadium. We've had an exciting first half. Buckeyes lead it by a point. In fact, uh, we're just a point away from last year's final score, 13-13 tie. Good offensive show by the Bucks in the first half. LSU up 3-0. It's tough to keep Carlos Snow out of the end zone, Paul. It certainly is. Carlos Snow. <laughs> from just one yard away. On this particular play, he just sprints one yard actually runs more than one yard to get to the corner of the end zone out running hill number 54 there in Harmon 58 the linebackers of LSU to get into the end zone for the Buckeyes at this point and Ohio State of course came back with their second touchdown at this point block punt rather bourgeois punt is blocked by number seven Clark and Michael McRae 99 picks up the bouncing ball and takes it all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. LSU gets back into the ball game with this score. Tom Hodson, number 13, drifting back in the pocket and dealing the ball out in the right flat to Moss, number six. Now watch this spinning move 
360 as he gets around the Buckeye tacklers and speeds into the end zone for the LSU score. That gave LSU a 10-pointer. They later kicked the field goal to make it 13, Ohio State 14. And Buckeye fans are obviously happy, Jack, and they should be Ohio State playing a very fine first half. The battle of the two quarterbacks, Brian Hudson, pretty even so far, Paul. Well, fine passing on both parts. Greg Fry with better protection, as you see, he's doing a much better job this afternoon. They kick off to Snow at the 13. Snow slips out to the 30, penalty marker down. Joe Brown made the tackle for LSU. First indication from the Buckeyes is that the penalty is against LSU. And it is. Gil Marchman signaling. Good first half by Craig Fry. Buckeyes with a first down advantage. In fact, it was well into the second quarter before LSU racked up its second first down of the game. Well, the Buckeyes total yards, 189 to 159. Passing, as you see, Ohio State leading in every department and uh, leading with turnovers, too, and that's something that the Buckeyes want to avoid here in the second half. A major walk-off against LSU on the second-half kickoff return. 15 yards. Illegal block against LSU, blocking below the waist. Penalizing the Bengal Tigers 15 yards. Well, this is great field position for the Buckeyes. They couldn't really ask for more to start their first series. Leading by a point, the Buckeyes put the ball in play at the 45. Scotty Graham, pile drive to the 48. Eric Hill, one of LSU's two outside linebackers, made the tackle, aided by Daryl Phillips, the nose guard. Ninety thousand five hundred eighty-four. The attendance here today, the second largest ever in Ohio Stadium history. I don't think all ninety thousand applauded, though, Paul. <laughs> Fry slips it in the right flat to the forty-two-yard line. Scotty Graham exploding down the sideline for a first down. Greg Fry will take the ball to Carlos Snow, who gets a block to hold up the heel of the linebacker, and then Fry throws the pass on the flat to Scott Graham. And once again, we see the young freshman not really play like a young freshman, but really playing more like an upperclassman. Scott Graham is very dependable as a receiver for Ohio State. Greg Fry looks over the LSU defense, readies the Buckeyes for a first and ten from the 41. Carlos Snow breaks one tackle. He has daylight. Carlos was one man away from the end zone. Great individual effort by Carlos Snow, taking this handoff on a draw play, slipping the tackle there. Phillip, he gets by Hill. Now he's off, and he gets by Jackson, and the last man, number 40, Bryce, comes up from his safety position in the LSU secondary to stop Carlos Snow, but a big gain, and the Buckeyes have the momentum again. From just outside the 15 of LSU, Buckeyes knocking on the door, first and 10. This is Snow lunging down to the 11. We've played a minute and a half, third quarter. Buckeyes just outside the LSU 10. Ohio State, depending on Carlos Snow, following the blocking up in the interior line, meets a little resistance at the line of scrimmage, stumbles forward and gets as much yardage as he possibly can. 
Carlos Snow having a very fine ball game this afternoon with his elusive running. Second down and six. Buckeyes must get inside the six for a first down. Draw play. This is Graham. He's rolled down at the nine. The play looked at first like it might go for more yardage. But LSU's defense, led by Burge Osbury, the inside linebacker, closed the door in a hurry. It is a fine defensive unit that has excellent athletes at the linebacking position, people who can really run and flow to the ball. And so when you see a play start out that way, it's not really going to get that much. And sometimes the runner has to turn it up inside. Third down. And a little over two, nearly three. Fry in trouble. He's back. Back at the 19. But Ron Sancho. Sancho, a fourth-year starter, put the heat on Fry and nailed him behind the line. LSU blitzing Sancho from his outside linebacking position. Number 52, Fry never sees him. Takes him down from the blind side, and LSU has shown the blitz more in this ball game than they've shown all of li last year, I believe, Jack. A 35-yard field goal attempt coming up by Omoro. He'll hook it from right to left, and he punches it toward the uprights. It's good. So Pat Omoro who was four for four in the Buckeyes opener, one for one a week ago, hits his first try of the day against LSU. And the Buckeyes lead is extended to 17-13. Buckeyes, however, fall, were in position to get six or seven points on that drive. Well, that they were. An error here and then a big play by LSU coming with the blitz, a little bit of a surprise maneuver again. This, this team, the LSU Bengals Tigers, don't have a tendency to blitz. Had the surprise Ohio State and Greg Fry, he never saw it. Pat O'Mara, number six, making his approach. He hits the football, and as he looks, it's good. And the Buckeyes add another three points to their lead on LSU. Who was it that said the Buckeyes kicking game was in trouble in 1988? <laughs> With the loss of Tupa in France, a lot of people thought it might be, but I'll tell you, Bowman and Omoro have certainly done the job. They have really risen to the occasion. Omoro has really kicked the football extremely well. He had had experience coming into this season, so he had kicked before in competition, but Bowman, of course, had not kicked in competition here on this level before and he has been a surprise but a really a welcome surprise with his punting. Buckeyes needed seven plays to go 52 yards capping off the drive with Amoro's field goal and Amoro prepares to kick off. It was a letdown by the Buckeyes kickoff team in that second quarter which ignited LSU led to a long kickoff return and a quick seven points followed by a field goal and got LSU right back into the game. And no doubt that was a point of conversation among the Buckeyes at the half. Buckeyes will cover this kickoff, which heads down to Watkins at the two. And this time they knock him flat at the 22. I'd say the Buckeyes grayed out at least an A-minus on that kickoff coverage Judah ball. Herman Judah Herman made the hit. Slip Watkins taking the football inside of his own five-yard line at about the two-yard line, showing that sprinter speed coming up, but he hits the stone wall and goes no further than the 22-yard line. Buckeye kick team that time was alert, got down under the coverage, and did a good job. 11.25 to go, third quarter. Buckeyes lead 17-13. Hodgson still has it. Wide open receiver is Tony Moss across midfield. 
David Brown hauls him down at the 40. Hudson is making this LSU passing game look so easy. Well, that time, the two outside receivers, Moss and Lee, went straight down the field. Moss went out to the left sideline, and Moss could have scored on this play, but he runs into Lee, and David Brown makes the stop on the play. First and 10, LSU, line of scrimmage, the Ohio State 41. This is Fuller popping it to the outside for a couple to the 39. LSU has run the football 60% of the time this season coming into the game today. But they're going to the pass a little more often here against the Buckeyes. Sideline pattern, catches made inbounds. It's ruled good at the 31 or 2. Very close to a first down as Alvin Lee clutched it just inbounds. Good timing between Lee and Hudson. Hudson sets up to throw the sideline pass. Hudson Lee breaking on his cut, coming up to make the stop. Dwight Smith can't really overplay it on that sideline pass because the receiver can turn it up and go deep on you. And so Dwight Smith did the best job that he can do in covering. Hudson still has it. Going to the end zone. It is broken up, no good. Excellent defensive play back there by Brown. He was assisted by Zach Dumas. David Brown and Zach Dumas teamed up to fight the football away from the receiver. A well-thrown ball. Well, it was the same play that Hudson elected to go to Moss. It was the big gainer about two plays earlier. That time he wanted it all going to Lee, streaking straight down the field. But Lee had drifted beyond the end zone line marker. And even though he made the catch, I don't believe he was in the field of play when he made that catch. Coming, in, coming into this game today, Lee had 14 catches for a total of 170 yards. Second down. Down the middle, great catch at the three-yard line. How about that Fuller, who's rushed the ball for 200 yards this season. He raced downfield and made a circus catch inside the five. Prior to this ball game, he has been used exclusively as a rusher. He has caught the football, but this is an, an example of his great ability to catch the football, turning back over his shoulders making a fingertip catch, concentrating hard, going to the surface. Great catch, big play for LSU. Two tight ends, a man in the slot in motion. That was Lee. Fuller running up inside. Touchdown, Tigers. Eddie Fuller catches the pass, setting LSU up with a first down at the three, and then he bolts the final three yards for six points and LSU which last led three nothing has regained the lead 1917 extra point try coming with Brown Dyke and Brown Dyke who has never missed a PAT at LSU is perfect with this one. And the Bengal Tigers lead Ohio State 20 to 17. David Brown gets some words of wisdom from John Cooper. Fuller takes his hand off, goes of the center of the LSU line, sidestepping some would-be tacklers, putting his head down and getting into the end zone. Here is a ground level shot of the same play. Again, Fuller taking the hand off, cutting back from left to right, finding an open space in the line, getting into the touchdown, going into the ball game. Fuller had not scored as a rusher for LSU this year. That was his first touchdown of the year. He has been the workhorse 
rushing for over 200 yards in two ball games. This afternoon, he has been a workhorse in the passing attack as he has made some very key catches for this, OS, for this uh, LSU offensive team. Boy, the Bengal Tigers, who were once down 14 to three, have turned it on. Hodgson and company have been going up top frequently. And play after play, Hodgson seems to find that seam in the Buckeye defense. Does the receiver have the freedom to run to that seam, Paul, or is he running a, a precise route, or does, does he have some flexibility? It's a combination of recognition on the part of the receiver as well as the quarterback. However, what Ohio State must do is apply more pressure on Hodgson. He has virtually been able to take a lot of time back there, find the receiver that he's looking for, and hit him consistently. Hodgson is having too much time to get a good look at that team and put the football in there. A quarterback with his ability to throw the football, if you give him too much time, he is really going to hurt you, and that's what Hodgson is starting to do. LSU made quick work of that 78 yards. The kickoff is a short one. Picked off at the 11 by Snow. He's got an alley. Carlos Snow shoots back out to the 38-yard line. Craig Jackson tackled Snow. will take the ball at the 10-yard line, just in front of the 10-yard line, gets up into the wedge. Number 36, the wedge, Buster Eckloff really takes out the wedge, but Carlos Snow breaks through it clean and makes a fine return out to, I'd say, the 45-yard line. Matlock gets the call in the backfield at fullback. Snow behind him. This is Carlos looking for an avenue, can't find one. And he spun down behind the line at the 37. Carl Dunbar. 6'4", 262-pound junior tackle. Stopped Carlos. We are six minutes into the third quarter. LSU 20, Ohio State 17. Second down, a little over 10, needed for a first down. Fry on the rollout, screens it back to the left to Snow. He's got some blockers. He's got a first down. Carlos Snow out of bounds inside the 40 at the 36. Oh, if the field was maybe just a foot wider, Paul, Carlos might have had the real estate he needed. This play is well executed. Take the snow. Greg Fry rolling to his right. He wants to go to Snow back on the screen all the way. Snow takes the ball. He gets a good block downfield. I believe it's by Stasniak, who appeared to be the blocker. And Carlos Snow makes good yardage. Knocked out of bounds. Buckeyes have a first down and in business. This is Carlos toting it over left guard for about four to the 32. Eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. LSU 20, Ohio State 17. Dunbar and Phillips, who anchor the middle of that defensive front for LSU, made the stop. Good numbers for Greg Fry with a quarter and a half to go. He's almost up to around the 200-yard mark. He's right at 177. Burtis and the Tiger battling it out, and it's the same thing going down on the field with the Buckeye and Bengals in the pad. Fry arching it. It is almost intercepted. Graham, the intended receiver. Jimmy Young. Came close to picking it off. And perhaps should have. Graham trying to work his way free, working against LSU defensive back. 
having a pretty tough time of it. Ball was a little bit underthrown. Ball really should have been intercepted by Gary Jackson. However, he does not make that play. Ohio State still has some life, and perhaps the Buckeyes can capitalize now. Third and a long six. Nearly seven needed for a first down. Buckeyes must get inside the 26. A lot of pressure. And Fry is sacked. And the Buckeyes are perhaps out of field goal range. Back at the 38. Pressure again coming from the outside. Number 70, James, the defensive end, and also 52. That is Ron Sancho, the linebacker. They close in on quarterback Greg Fry, and he does not have a place to move up out of the pocket. He's thrown for a loss, moves Ohio State out of field goal territory, and the Buckeyes will have to punt. And Jeff Bowman will try to pin the LSU Tigers back inside their 15 or 10 yard line here. And he pooches it down inside the 15. Buckeyes touch it down. Let's see where the ball is spotted. An Ohio State player first uh, swatted the pigskin out around the 10, or at least I thought he did. Ball is placed down at the 2. Let's see where the ball is officially marked for play by LSU. The ball is touched right at a, or a little bit outside of the 10-yard line by an Ohio State defender. It arose to a stop inside of the five. The officials, of course, moved the ball back at the 10-yard line to mark it. And LSU will have control at that point. It's still a pretty good job by Bowman. The last thing the Buckeyes wanted to do there was knock it right on through the end zone. Well, it has LSU backed up. If Ohio State can keep the Tigers inside of the 10-yard line, they will reestablish field position, hopefully on the exchange of punts the next time that they have an offensive series that they can start operating again. You mentioned earlier, Paul, the Buckeyes need to put a little more heat on Hudson. How do you go about doing that? Should the Buckeyes send a linebacker or two? Well, they're not able to get to Hudson with the three down linemen, defensive linemen that they're rushing, and they will have to apply pressure by sending one or two of their linebackers from the outside or inside, and then also covering the secondary. Perhaps that'll force Hudson to throw the football a little more quickly, and he'll make an error throwing it. LSU head coach Mike Archer, 35 years of age. Second season as LSU's head coach. You mentioned uh, the Buckeyes' defensive effort attempting to uh, force an error from Hudson. He's only been intercepted, I think, once every 32 or 33 throws. So it doesn't happen very often, does it? Well, it certainly doesn't happen when you don't apply pressure to a passer, but I believe that Hudson is just like most quarterbacks who throw under fire, they make mistakes. Today, he's had awfully good protection and has not been harassed or hurried in his throwing at all, and so uh, he's been very relaxed and confident and poised back there in that pocket. But I, I assure you, when you turn up the pressure on him, Jack, they make mistakes. Hudson is 6'3", a 195-pound junior. This is Fuller ripping right up the middle for about 12 quick yards. Boy, Fuller has been a part of LSU's last three plays. Double team block at the point of attack. Fuller goes off the block of Victor Jones. Fullback leading the way. He gets down in good yardage before being stopped by McCray. from the I formation. This is Fuller. Buckeyes latch on to him. Finally drag him down at the 29. But not before a six-yard advance by Fuller. Derek McCready. Who played at Waldorf Junior College before coming to Ohio State on the hip. Good blocking by the LSU line up at the point of attack and good picking the holes by Fuller as he cuts off 
Rodriguez block spins and turns and gets extra yardage against the Buckeyes. Second down and four. Moss in motion. Hodson wants to pitch it. Now he scrambles ahead for a first down yardage across the 35 to the 36. And it was McCready again in on the tackle for Ohio State. We're down to six minutes. Third quarter. LSU by three, 20 to 17. Buckeyes would like to stay within a touchdown and keep LSU out of the end zone of its possession. But the Bengal Tigers have revved up their offense and have been tough to stop since midway in the second quarter of this game. Hodson play action. Rifles it to the sideline. It to the sideline. Dumas and Peel wrap up the receiver. Lee, very close to a first down. Alvin Lee coming into this ball game had 14 receptions. He certainly hasn't hurt his average today. This time running, what in effect was a simple out pattern. There you see 21, Zach Dumas dropping into his zone, but he catches the ball in front of Dumas. Dumas then comes up along with Peel to make the stop on the play, but again, it's close to first down territory for LSU, and the officials, of course, are coming out to have a spotting and marking to see if the LSU Tigers did actually make the first down. Gil Marchman signals first down LSU. 46 yard line. In the last two plays, LSU has moved ahead of Ohio State in total offense today, which uh, says something for the job the Ohio State defense has done. But LSU's offense executing quite well now with first and 10. 46-yard line of LSU. This is Jones stepping down to the 47 of Ohio State. Gain of six or seven more. Andy Gerd tackled him. Mike Sullivan assisted. Tigers are making good yards on first down, Paul. In this drive, they've sort of changed the focus of their attack, doing most of the damage on the ground and occasionally going to the air. Here to four, it's been mostly throwing the football that they've heard Ohio State. Jones again, brings it to the outside, shy of a first down at the 45 or six. Big play coming up, third down, at least one, maybe two. Maturski and Gerd came over to stymie that running play outside the 45. Third down, a long one needed for LSU. A briskly paced third quarter. We're down to four minutes and 10 seconds. Two tight ends are in now for LSU. First down and then some inside the 40 to the 35. Buckeyes made good penetration but could not trip up the ball carrier. Nice run by one of LSU's backup tailbacks, Williams, Paul. Darnell Williams taking this handoff, going over, I believe it's Mike McCray, keeping those legs turning and going and makes a valuable first down for LSU. The Tigers are on the move again. Here's a quickie in the flat to Moss. Moss scampers inside the 25. First down, penalty marker. Very likely it's a face mask against the Bucks. Peel and Hurd ran the receiver to the sideline. Three 
three and one half minutes left in the third quarter. LSU at the 15 of Ohio State with a first and 10. LSU has shown this play once before in the ball game. Flanker screen. This time it's the number six Moss. He gets a block from the other receiver, Lee. Face mask occurs apparently by Smith. This is Fuller breaking a couple tackles and plowing down to the eight-yard line. Two yards, three yards short of a first down. But another productive effort on first down for LSU. Dwight Smith came up from his cornerback spot to tackle the ball carrier. LSU punishing the Buckeyes on first down in this drive. Each first down gain is about four to five yards. That's what a coach likes to see his offensive team do, and LSU is doing it to perfection. Jones and Fuller behind Hodgson. Fuller gets the call, gaping hole. There is a flag and a holding against LSU as the ball carrier sliced down to the three. But I'm sure it will be negated by a penalty against LSU. So instead of a first down inside the five, first and goal, LSU will repeat the second down and have 12 or 13 yards remaining for a first down. We're down to 250 in the third quarter. LSU leads it by three, and as we mentioned, Paul, at the outset of this drive, Buckeyes must limit LSU to a field goal or nothing, or find themselves behind by a couple touchdowns. Well, if the Buckeyes can get out of this series by limiting LSU to a three-pointer, they've really done their job, the defense has. Receivers split left and right. Hodgson changing the play at the line of scrimmage. There's a fade pattern too far in the end zone. Trying to catch up with the pigskin was Tony Moss. Zach Dumas was in hot pursuit. Was that play called at the line of scrimmage, Paul? Apparently it was a checkoff that occurred at the line of scrimmage. Quarterback Tommy Hodgson coming up to the line of scrimmage, seeing that Moss had a lot of field to work with to the left. Just through the fade pattern, they almost made it connect just inches away from Moss' hands and LSU will be facing a big third down situation and the Buckeyes have played it well. LSU must get to the five for a first down. Hodgson lofting it down the middle too far. Incomplete. So on two straight plays, one to Moss and one to Lee, Hodgson overshoots. LSU must kick for three. LSU running the seam pattern in the middle with Lee, their top receiver. This was a big winning pattern for them in the first half of the ball game, but the ball is overthrown. Clark covering on the play. LSU will be forced to try a field goal. Brown Dyke two for two today. And he smacks it toward the uprights and is on target. So Brown Dyke is now three for three today. In his two previous seasons at LSU, had kicked 14 of 18 field goal tries and 14 of 20. So he is a very reliable place kicker. And his last two field goals are the margin of difference now. Six-point lead for LSU, 23-17. Well, LSU came into this ball game with a very strong hunting game, Jack, as you alluded to earlier. Buckeye defense, however, in that series really did their job. They gave up some real estate, but they certainly didn't break. They only gave up three points, and that keeps the offense within contact of LSU, and so it was a job well done, I think, by the Buckeye defense of 11. 
LSU has controlled the football much of this third quarter. Buckeye defense has played well, but as much as it's been on the field in the last uh, quarter and a half or so, Paul, you'd uh, like to believe that the Ohio State offense would take over, give the defense a rest, hold on to the ball for several minutes. 72-yard drive, requiring a little less than five minutes. Brown Dyke's field goal culminated the drive, giving LSU the six-point advantage. So we're two minutes and ten seconds away from this third quarter. in the last nine quarters of football, the Buckeye offense from scrimmage has produced just one touchdown. The other two coming on the block punt today and the kickoff return to snow last week. Well, the challenge still before Ohio State's offensive unit is to get the ball into the end zone. They've shown today that they can move it up and down the field, but they still are a little bit consistent in getting it in the end zone. They need something on the scoreboard in this series coming up. Brown Dyke kicking. And this time he dribbles it down the middle. Snow gathers it in. Zipping back across the 30. Carlos Snow on the loose. To the 42 or 3 yard line. picking up this dribbling football on the ground, keeps his poise, looks it into his hands, now starts up into the wedge, big hole. On the right side, he's off to the races, almost goes all the way, runs out of real estate, as he just can't cut back on Brownback because of another defender inside, so he's forced out of bounds. Carlos came into the game today, ranked 15th in the country in all-purpose yards, and his long kickoff returns will just... Uh, Simply up his rating in that department. This play did not beat the whistle. Penalty marker down before the snap from center. It looks like it's going to be a first and 15 for Ohio State instead of first and 10. Well, Buckeyes, who were penalized seven times for 75 yards a week ago, just cannot afford these negative yards in the second half of this game against LSU. They really can't, Jack. After a wonderful start with Carlos Snow's outstanding kickoff return, they come back and get an illegal procedure penalty. Now, the infraction may appear to be small, but that... There's another five yards onto that 10 yards, fifth, first and 15. It almost puts them in a short throwing position, and uh, LSU knows that. Fry still has it. It's Edwards. Catch is made inbounds at the 35. LSU defender gambled, tried to deflect the football, came up empty. All right, sprint out to the left by Greg Fry, and he managed to make a long throw. This is close because Mike Mays is breaking on the ball, just misses it, but Edwards makes the catch. The Buckeyes come back and get most of that yard. He's back on one throw, and so they now are looking good in this second down situation. And we are down to a minute 50, third quarter. Second down, two and a half yards needed for a first down. This is Carlos Snow, upended at the 34. Gain maybe one, and that's it. Ron Sancho on the tackle for LSU. Third down and at least a yard left for a first down. Under a minute and a half left in the third period. As Olive comes off, Edwards on with the play. 25 second clock is down to seven.
Sprint draw, Carla Snow churned to the 32 or three. He may have picked up the first down. Short game, but he didn't need much. Rudy Harmon stood Snow up at the 32 yard line. Gil Marchman eyeballed it and decided to wave on the chain. Very slight mist in the air now here at Ohio Stadium. First down, Ohio State. So the Buckeyes, after a penalty a moment ago, left them first and 15, recover and get a first down at the 32 of LSU. This is Graham. Graham dies to the 30. Second down, eight coming. Rudy Harmon subdued Graham. Short game, under a half minute left in the third. Mark Bouti assisted on the tackle. That may have been the last play of the third quarter. Play clock shows about three more seconds than the scoreboard clock. Buckeyes are up to the line. That's it. Fry lets time expire here in the third quarter. That's the end of three periods at Ohio Stadium. Our score, LSU 23, Ohio State 17. We'll return to more Ohio State football in a moment. This is Jack Kramer with Paul Warfield back at Ohio Stadium in Columbus. We're seconds away from the start of the fourth and final period. Buckeyes trail LSU by six. This team is still up for grabs. In fact, the Buckeyes, Paul, are just 30 yards away from tying the score and taking the lead. Jack, we we're almost in a similar situation that Ohio State was in second, uh, earlier in the third period, that is. When they were moving the football down on the opposite end of the field, they were getting down close. LSU came again with a surprise blitz maneuver. Probably would be wise for Ohio State to look for that blitz maneuver, and if they can see it coming, maybe capitalize on it and hit them for something big. You haven't referred to that uh, vanilla defense of LSU for a while. Well, it's been vanilla most of the <laughs> afternoon, but occasionally LSU has slipped in a blitzer here or so. Uh, just to keep, keep the Buckeyes honest. They, they flavor it up every now and then. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but uh, we hope that the results are not <laughs> what they'd like for it to be. But uh, this would be an ideal situation for LSU to come with the blitz. And uh, the few times that they have blitz today, they've made it work. So it's been a pretty effective maneuver for them. From a statistical standpoint, Paul, this game is really pretty even. It has been all day long and uh, continues to be that way. Both offenses have been pretty effective in moving the football. Both defenses have played pretty well. So it's just a case of teams being able to execute today on the afternoon. Buckeyes with the two turnovers. Of course, a few things don't show up on the statistical ledger. The block punch, which the Buckeyes cashed in for a touchdown. And a couple long kickoff returns in this game. This is Graham powering to the 28, and that's it. A stubborn LSU defense towards that play. Buckeyes are now confronted with third down and at least six yards to go, maybe seven. Burr Jawsbury stacked it up for the LSU defense. LSU took over the total yardage lead for this game in the third quarter, surpassing the Buckeyes. 
But as you said, Jack, it's an awfully even game up to this point. LSU, of course, six points up on the scoreboard, but Ohio State driving. 3rd and 6. Fry passes upfield. Ellis on the reception, but he is ridden to the sideline, shy of a first down. Strong defensive play by Rudy Harmon, who simply would not allow Ellis to turn upfield. Here, LSU comes with the blitz again with their outside linebackers, Hill and Sancho, but Ohio State picks it up. Deals the football to Ellis, but Ellis does not have the necessary yardage as Rudy Harmon does a great job of stopping him just shy of first down marker. Pat O'Morrow will have to test his foot again. Buckeyes need a long two for a first down, showing a lot of confidence in O'Morrow. The field goal unit is on. This is a 42-yard try by Pat. It's away, and it is good. O'Morrow. Drills it, and the Buckeyes cut the lead to 23-20. Pat O'Morrow standing and waiting his approach. He hits it, and he knows right away as he gives the signal that it's a good field goal. Pat O'Morrow, seven for seven in the field goal department on the season. He is red hot. Buckeyes Paul needed just two yards for a first down. A lot of people would have uh, second-guessed Ohio State had O'Morrow missed the kick, but with a full quarter to play, that was a smart move, and it paid off. It was the right move for Coach Cooper to make, certainly. No questions about it from these quarters here, Jack. <laughs> There is a lot of time to be played in this football game. And if anybody's ball game up to this point, Coach Cooper did the wise thing, get the points while you can take them. Well, it's up to the Buckeye defense now to make something happen. Force a three and out, force a turnover. Get the, full by, get the football back for the offense with the lead uh, six points or less in hope so that the offense can punch in seven points and pull this game out of the fire. O'Mora's 41-yard kick finished off the Ohio State drive. Both teams have had difficulty covering kickoffs in this game. Ideally, Ohio State would like to pin LSU deep in its own territory on this kick, so the kick team will be hustling down to try to get there and stop the return ball carry from getting beyond the 20. And the kick is angled out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Omoro trying to cough and corner that kickoff. Forcing LSU to cover it. Down inside the 10-yard line in the corner of the playing area. Twisted that one out of bounds and will have to kick it again. Five yards back from the 30-yard line. And, of course, that gives LSU a five-yard advantage. Little drizzle in the air now at Ohio Stadium. Slight wind out of the south. Adam Morrow's back. Omoro hits a line drive boot, which bounds across the sideline at the six. Five more yards charge to Ohio State. On this approach, Jack, he's going to have to hit it straight down the middle. 
Buckeyes have been penalized 10 yards on successive kicks. You see the LSU deep safeties are now lining up on the 10-yard line, and so this is turning out to give them a little advantage field position-wise. Yeah, the end result is that uh, the field is essentially shortened for Hodgson and the LSU offense when they get the football. That's right. If uh, they have any kind of kick return at all, they should be right up around the 30-yard line easily. Thirteen twenty-six left to play in this game. Buckeyes trail by three. Tomorrow well, may not take any chances on this one. He hits a sidewinder again, fielded at the 14 by Watkins, behind a bevy of blockers, circling the far side, up the sideline, inside the 40, and finally tackled at the 38. He may have stepped out at the OSU 45, about seven yards further back upfield. So for the second time today, LSU's kickoff return team whips Ohio State's coverage and gives Hodson and company excellent field position at the 45 of the Scarlet and Gray. Thwart that running play at the 43. McCready and Showalter in there on the tackle of Fuller. Buckeye player shaken up there at the 47. May very well be John Sullivan. Who was shaken up for a moment in the first half of this game. Line of scrimmage, the 43. The LSU rushing play game two. It will be second and eight when play resumes. Well, one positive note, Paul, LSU, much of the last two quarters has been highly productive on first down. Buckeyes shut him down to just a plus two on that first down effort. LSU had started to go more to the run here in the second half and have been very effective with their run game, as you said, Jack, picking up four, five, sometimes even as much as six yards a crack on first down. That puts a defensive team really in a position in which uh, they can't really look for the run or pass when you have short yardage coming back on second and third down. So. Uh, the objective is to stop them shy of that kind of yardage on first down and, and the Buckeyes look like they've made an adjustment to that run game and stop the initial thrust by LSU on this drive with just a two-yard game. Well, can you imagine what LSU's running game would be like if Williams, the fine running back from a year ago, uh, had not been injured and lost for the season to LSU? Well, he was one of the outstanding runners in the country, and uh, but they're operating like they don't miss him out there. Some pressure on Hodgson, who eludes it. Oh, it's caught at the 40. Vincent Clark yanks down the receiver. A lot of activity on that play, which netted just two or three yards. This play was designed as a screen. Hodgson really wanted the screen to his left side right there, but... Something destroyed the screen. I think it was Mike McCray, and then he elects to throw out to the safety valve out here. Moss. Moss doesn't get very much yardage because Clark is right on his case and brings him down. Very alert play by the Buckeyes defense. Third down and seven from the 42. LSU must get to the 35 for a first down. Hodson, open receiver, first down to the 32-yard line. The tight end, Halliburton, hauled it in. 
LSU ball seemed to flood the right flat with receivers, flood the left flat with receivers. They were all over the place. Too much time for Hudson back here. He's got a lot of time to look around and find an open receiver. As you see, he's completely protected by white-shirted LSU blockers, and then he finds Halliburton out in the flat. Dwight Smith comes up and makes the stop, but it's a first down for the Tigers. 11 and one half minutes to go. Quick screen to the right. This is Moss on the loose to the 19. 13-yard catch and run by Moss. There is a penalty flag down at the 27. Quite a few penalties in this game. If the play stands, it's a first down for LSU at the 19-yard line. Oh, perhaps an ineligible receiver. Well, I think it was uh, either an inadvertent flag or a change call following a discussion by two of the officials. In either case, the play stands, and there is no infraction. So from the 19, first down and 10, actually just outside the 18, LSU leading by three, 11.21 to go in this game. This is Fuller looking for a hole, and he stopped short of the 15. John Sullivan smacked him down at that point. Showalter led the charge for Ohio State. Sullivan assisted. 11 minutes left. I think the last time LSU had possession, Paul, we were hoping at about this point in the drive, the Buckeyes could stiffen and force the field goal. Buckeye defense must, must repeat their effort and keep LSU out of the end zone. This is Fuller trying to turn the corner, and he slips down to the 11 or 12, three yards short of the first down. Showalter knocked him off his wheels. Biggest play of the game coming up. Hudson takes the snap. Quick pitch to Fuller. Fuller going outside, gets around Kaczerski. Joe Walter comes from behind and brings him down. He does get across the line of scrimmage and pretty good yardage. The Tigers find themselves in a third and three and a very big possession coming up. Jones and Fuller behind the quarterback. Fuller in motion. This is Jones spinning. First down to the six. Zach Dumas knocked the ball carrier down. First and goal for LSU. Inside trap going to Jones, the fullback who doesn't run very much, but he gets inside, keeps his feet after being hit initially, and falls forward for good yardage and a first down. The ball is right at about the Ohio State six-yard line. This is Jones jumping to the three. He got half of it. Michael McCray comes off the pile for the Buckeyes. We're down to 9-12 left in this game. Ground level shot, straight hand off to Jones, goes to the right side, going behind Hubert and Kuti, and making tough yardage. Stopped by Jim Peel and Ken Coleman. Kenny Coleman from Meadowdale in Dayton, Ohio, was in there on the last play for the Bucks. Hodgson looking, sprinting near side in the end zone, too far. Intended receiver was probably 89 Halliburton, although Fuller was nearby. Third and goal from the three. 
Hudson is probably a little bit upset with himself. He did have Fuller early. If he would have released the ball a little bit sooner, he would have gotten Fuller clean because Fuller was in the area. Perhaps he missed him. He elected to go inside to Halliburton. Buckeyes must hold. LSU is three yards away from going up by nine points. Lob pass is juggled. No good. Pretty sticky coverage by Vincent Clark. Paul, number seven. Good effort in the end zone. It seems like on every critical play, we have called Vince Clark's name or number, and he does it again in a very critical situation, defending against Alvin Lee, the top receiver of the LSU Tigers. Vince Clark right on him all the way, denies him of that pass. The Bengals will have to settle for the three-pointer. This is a 20-yard kick, nearly straight on for Brown Dyke. A lot of movement along the line of scrimmage. Well, if it's against Ohio State, it would move LSU a yard and a half closer. Buckeyes trying to distract the LSU linemen, trying to get them to jump offside, and yet it looks like Andy Gerd, number 49, got into the zone and touched an LSU player. Consequently, Ohio State is ruled offside but refused. LSU would rather keep the kick at extra point distance. So this is a 20-yard boot. Good spot. The kick is away, and it's good. LSU leads by 6, 26-20. Buckeyes are still within a touchdown and a point after touchdown of winning this football game. 8.43 to go. Again, I'd have to say the Ohio State defense did a good job. They were pushed around quite a bit over the field, but they denied LSU a touchdown, and so they're holding up. Keep in mind, LSU racked up a 27 and 34 points against the likes of Texas A&M and Tennessee in its uh, first two ball games. And the Buckeyes have limited LSU to just two touchdowns, four field goals in this game. But now it's up to the offense. Again, the offense has moved extremely well most of the day, but have been stopped once they get down near scoring territory or inside of the 20-yard line of LSU. They need a six-pointer. and. Right now would be as good a time as any to put one on the board. Ohio State head coach John Cooper and his assistants have coached the Buckeyes into a position where they can control the outcome of this game. Buckeyes have played LSU nearly even for three and a half quarters. Brown Dyke's field goal capped off the drive. An 11 play offensive thrust for LSU using a little over four and a half minutes. Brown Dyke will be kicking off to Olive or Snow. Olive and Snow are inside the 10. Olive at the top of your picture, Snow at the bottom. And it's a grounder to Olive at the 12, right up the middle. Trying to elude Tigers. Can he get outside? He gets to the 24, and that's all. Buckeye Partisans on the east side thought that uh, Olive was wrapped up. Buckeye fans keeping dry here at Ohio Stadium. Slight mist in the air. But that certainly doesn't put a damper on this game. It has been an outstanding college game here at Ohio Stadium this afternoon. Line of 
scrimmage, the 25, just short of it. Neither team has used a timeout in this half. This is Fry optioning to the 29, he gained four. Ron Sancho made the tackle for LSU. Fry kept the ball in bounds, Paul. Buckeyes would like to be the last team to score in this game. Would love to score and not give LSU much time to, to work with. Well, they are going about uh, running their offense like they planned it during the first part of the game, utilizing the run, and we'll see if they throw on this particular down. This is Fry hitting Ellis, first down, 37. Osbury knocked Ellis to the sideline. Jeff Ellis, who caught five against Syracuse, hauls this one in, first down yardage. Sticking to the game plan, mixing the run and the pass, this time off the fake and play action. Greg Fry delivers the ball into the hands, waiting hands of Jeff Ellis, who gets first down yardage. Buckeyes now on the move. This is Fry heaving a bomb for Olive. It is too far inside the 20. Excellent coverage by Mike Mays, who actually had Olive beaten by a step or a step and a half. Buckeyes deciding to go for it all on the deep ball, but Mike Mays did not bite on that out and up maneuver of Olive. Olive didn't do as crisp a job of setting up the defensive back and Mays playing it very soft certainly would not come up. LSU has the yardage lead in this game, having amassed uh, 72 more yards than the Buckeyes, who are in possession at their own 37, a second and 10. Fry misses Edwards at the 50. Edwards was a little slow coming out of that break. Fry was under pressure that time because LSU blitzed once again, sending Eric Hill from his outside linebacking position when Fry came up off of the play action fake. There was Hill right in his face. He had to deliver the football a little bit earlier than he would under normal circumstances. Needless to say, this is a critical play for the Buckeyes. The way LSU's offense has been piling up the yards in the last... Uh, two quarters or so you fear that the Bucks might not get the ball back if they give it up with several minutes left Fry in the pocket being flushed out up the sideline over the head of a receiver intended for Graham Graham and Fry were trying to re read each other Graham just ran out of room on that side of the field well, the inexperience of some of the younger receivers on that play right there, Jack. Greg Fry was in trouble, and it's up to the receivers to help out a quarterback by getting themselves up and open. End over end kick by Bowman. Bounds to the 25-yard line. Buckeyes touch it at that point. Maybe not. The ball is rolling inside the 10. Ball rolls dead at the seven, but one official will spot it back up at the 25. Buckeyes trying a, uh, a sleight of hand maneuver there, but. <laughs> well, the official saw the ball touch at the 25 yard line, and that's where they spotted. Ohio State defense cannot afford to allow LSU any more points. They've got to simply stop them on this possession and get the ball back for their offense in favorable field position and go from there. Well, you're this right. is a big series. Well, when you say any more points, you're exactly right because a field goal would uh, put this game out of reach. LSU leads by six. And the Buckeye defense did well on LSU's last two possessions, limiting LSU to just three points. But the Buckeye defense must do better than that now. 
LSU by six with 7.03 to go. Buckeyes are going to have to pressure Hobson, Hobson a little bit more when he's back throwing the football. He's had a lot of time to throw the football, and he's just too good of a passer to give him time. Game attendance, 90,584, second largest crowd ever at Ohio Stadium. Well, win, lose, score, draw. Buckeyes have certainly rebounded from the pummeling they suffered at the hands of Pittsburgh last week. And this game will hopefully serve as a good springboard into the Big Ten schedule next week. This is Fuller looking for an avenue. And he churns out to about the 33-yard line. The play gained just far too much on first down. Eight-yard advance. LSU would like to run the football in this situation, take the clock down and run it out and take the ball downfield as far as possible and get in a position to kick a field goal. So Ohio State is going to have to be stingy to the yardage that allows on first down and any down for that matter. Each team with three timeouts left. This is Fuller. He gets across the line of scrimmage, has a first down with three yards to spare. Buckeyes gang tackling short of the 40. Fuller taking the handoff following good blocking. Missed tackle by the Buckeyes. Two missed tackles almost at the point of attack. Ohio State had a chance to perhaps him the ball carrier fuller up right at the line of scrimmage and in one instance behind the line of scrimmage but they could not make that tackle six minutes left in this game first and ten for lsu at the 38 this is fuller upended at the 42 yard line a gain of about three Jim Peel upset him. Second down for LSU and between seven and eight yards to go for a first down. Buckeyes need to stiffen and force a third down pass. 520 left in the fourth quarter. This is Fuller, he's tied up, he dives for about two or three. Buckeyes cornered Fuller at the line of scrimmage or just behind it. Derek McCready finished him off at the 44, third and five. Vincent Clark has entered the Ohio State secondary. Buckeyes employ the nickel. In other situations, Hodgson has gone to the tight end. This may be another situation where you're attempt to do so. Hodgson shoots it too high. It's deflected and caught. Racing down the sideline is Alvin Lee. He goes in. LSU didn't draw it up on the board that way. But nonetheless, six points, 32 to 20, Tigers by 12. Hudson will roll to his right. He has three receivers in the area. The ball goes off the hands of Moss, the intended receiver of LSU, into the awaiting hands of Alvin Lee, and he sprints the rest of the way into the end zone. Bad luck for the Buckeyes. Here is Brown Dyke's point after. And it's good. And it's 33 to 20 in favor of LSU. Well, on numerous occasions last week, the ball bounced away of the Pittsburgh Panthers. Of course, the Buckeyes many times were their own worst enemy last week, but they certainly deserved a better fate. Number six, Tony Moss. As you'll see right here, the ball going 
off of Moss's hands, who goes high in the air. He can't receive it. Deflected right into the awaiting hands of Alvin Lee, who goes the rest of the way in for the score. I don't know if in the pro game, Paul, that would be a legal reception, would it? No. No, it, no, I think it has, the rule has changed. It's now legal in the professional yeah, uh, rules. I, I think maybe it has in the last couple of years. So with a 13-point lead now, LSU prepares to kick off. Buckeyes need two touchdowns to pull this out of the fire, and that's a tall order in the final four and a half minutes. 75-yard drive. And, of course, the big play was the pass from Hodgson to Lee. The middle man was Moss. <laughs> Boy, Lee and Moss are having quite a day, Paul. Well, on receiving, Lee has 108 yards on receptions. And, of course, Moss with that 56-yarder of the deflected pass. So I'm sorry, Moss has 116 yards on his own, but uh, Lee has 108 yards, and uh, 56 of those yards came on the defect deflected pass. Snow at the top of your picture. Olive was at the bottom. They're lined up back inside the five. The kick by Brown Dyke is squibbed. Buckeyes will get good field position out across the 40-yard line. Reserve tight end Jim Palmer ran the football to the 41. First down, Ohio State. 4.24 to go. Buckeyes with three timeouts remaining. Buckeyes need to score quickly against LSU and then get the football back in the last couple minutes. Stranger things have happened, that's for sure. This is Palmer to the 48, gain of seven. Or I should say Jeff Graham. 84 and not 85. Sophomore Jeff Graham who played his high school football at Alter in Kettering. Records a seven-yard gain. Clock running down to 356. Fry to Snow. He breaks the tackle to the 40. Harmon and Abair teamed up to trip Snow. Carlos Snow taking on the identity of what people call outstanding if not great backs we'll call him outstanding which means that one person will not or rarely stop him in the broken field Harmon comes up after the first tackle was missed to stop Carlos Snow this is Fry pass is at the knees of Ellis who can't hang on at the 36 three minutes and 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter Buckeyes once led in this game, 14 to three. That was back in the second period. Second down and 10. LSU may have been offside. down to the 34 a productive gain of six clock shows 323 I'm pretty sure LSU jumped yes they did the play gained uh, just one more yard than the penalty would Take the five-yard assessment. 
bottom of your screen, number 54, you see him, Eric Hill there. He's the guilty man who got across the line of scrimmage a little bit too fast. This is Fry. He's wrapped up and sacked at the 38. Down to 3.05 to go in this game. Ron Sancho, who had 86 tackles last year for LSU, makes the hit on the quarterback, Fry. And Ron Sancho from the top part of your screen. Number 52 will come around beating off the block of Scott Graham, 35, and will wrap up Greg Fry for a sack. Buckeyes will have to call and did call timeout to stop the clock. Well, Buckeyes are in four down territory now. I was about to say, Paul, after the Buckeyes ripped off uh, 20 yards in two plays, starting from their own 40, that uh, LSU's vanilla defense had turned a little soft. <laughs> well, LSU came into this ball game with a reputation of having the ability to blitz, but rarely blitzing, and we've seen quite a bit of blitzing from them today. Uh, I think that they've followed the same pattern that the Pitt Panthers used a week ago. They perhaps haven't blitzed as much, but they've blitzed in key situations and uh, have, have recorded a couple of critical sacks. Well, next week, a Big Ten play starts. Buckeyes entertain Illinois. Indiana travels to Northwestern. A big game, Iowa at Michigan State, Michigan's at Wisconsin, Purdue entertains Minnesota. And although the Buckeyes are on the short end of this 33 to 20 count, Buckeyes have certainly made a complete turnaround from the dismal performance a week ago and uh, we'll hopefully have a good week of practice and be able to start the Big Ten uh, Conference with a very good frame of mind in place. Well, they played awfully well here today offensively and defensively and perhaps are just a couple of mistakes from really not even being closer in this ball game. Buckeyes are eight yards short of a first down, must get inside the 30. Some stunning by LSU. Fry zeroes in with Olive to the 27. It's a first down. Clock stops momentarily as the chain is advanced. We're at 259. Jimmy Young came over from his cornerback spot to make the tackle on Olive. Buckeyes send Edwards far right. Jeff Graham to the left at the bottom of your screen. Bake is to snow. Open receiver. Catch is made. No, Edwards can't hang on at the 11. Clock stops at 2.43. Now Greg Fry, after a fine start against Syracuse, 12 for 17. Fell off to a 9 for 30 last week. Of course, he was blitzed heavily by Pitt. He's come back with a performance today, Paul, much like he had in the opener. It's been a good performance by Greg Fry. No question about that. Catch is made at the 25-yard line by Snow, and he was... Knocked off his feet by Rudy Harmon. In fact, Carlos is shaken up. Clock stops at 2.31. Carlos Snow being uh, helped up. Carlos, the sophomore from Cape High School in Cincinnati. Buckeyes have two timeouts remaining. LSU three. We're down to 231 left in this game. Buckeyes, Paul, can't afford to use many more seconds to get this ball into the end zone. 
No, they need to get it into the end zone as fast as possible. And if they are successful in doing that, the obvious would be the onside kick uh, maneuver. There's only two minutes, 31 seconds remaining on the clock. And if Ohio State is successful in scoring here by a touchdown, uh, they'll need to on onside kick the football. Graham and Olive are split left. Fry throws, catch is made by Jeff Graham. He's down to the four and a half yard line. Boy, Paul, I like the look to this Jeff Graham. Going into the heart of the defense, right in the middle of the field, Jeff Graham goes up high to spear this ball and then makes a fine run getting inside. Greg five throwing it high, Graham has it. Now looking to make a move and then dive to the middle of the field to get the necessary yards. Graham will come underneath on this pattern after it's cleared out by Olive. Spear the football, make a move, and get upfield to the goal post. Buckeyes going for six here. Fry shooting it into the end zone. It is ruled out of bounds. Catch was made by Bernard Edwards, but he was a step beyond the sideline. Fry threw into a crowd. 2.01 to go. Clock stops. Boy, Jeff Graham, not only does he catch the ball well, his quarterback skills at Alder have uh, given him a lot of instincts at running the football after he catches it. Showed good running ability on that last reception. This is Carlos down to the goal line. Let's see. Touchdown. Daylight to the right, then goes back left off of Zacharoff's black block and knifes into the end zone for the touchdown. Extra point by Omoro is up and through, and the Buckeyes have cut the lead to six. 33 to 27. And that score sets up what you would think would be an onside kick try by Ohio State. Buckeyes have two timeouts left and are down to six. Ground level shot of Carlos Snow taking the handoff and cutting back against the grain, meeting some resistance, but breaking the plane and getting into the end zone. Now a view from up top. Snow following Got Graham and cutting off of Greg Zacharoff's block and getting into the end zone. Wonder what they're talking about, Paul. <laughs> well, it's no surprise to you and I, as well as the fans here at Ohio Stadium, that the Buckeyes are going to onside kick this football. They're just getting final instructions from their coaching staff in terms of how to get down and cover this kick and get to the football. Young Buckeye Rooters holding out to the very end. It has been quite a game. Buckeyes have played the highly ranked LSU Tigers right down to the wire. And at the moment are six points short with a minute 56 to go. Omoro 
Hits it down to the corner and out of bounds, or did it go into the end zone? Right at the pylon, the ball skirted off the field of play. And I believe it went out of bounds inside the one, and that means the Bucks would kick it again. Nope, it did go on into the end zone, which took no time off the clock. LSU starts at the 20. Buckeyes have two timeouts remaining with which they can stop the clock. Disregard the play. The kickoff from the end of the end zone. The officials have waved off the flag. There was no penalty. The ball did go into the end zone. Buckeyes do have two remaining timeouts, but uh, they're going to have to tackle the football and try to make LSU fumble to come up with this ball. So the Buckeyes elect to not try the onside kick. Hope to stop LSU on the 20. Fuller for one yard. That's all. John Sullivan smacked him down. Timeout Bucks. The play used seven seconds. Buckeyes have one timeout left, so following third down, Ohio State will not be able to stop it unless, of course, LSU would throw it in completion. Buckeyes defensive unit playing tough and still aggressive in this ball game. Mike Sullivan from his nose tackle position stopped Fuller. Short yardage. Ohio State is now called timeout. It is 1.49 on the clock. Buckeyes will have to come up with another big effort on second down. Well, the Buckeyes still have some weapons left, which can turn this game into their favor. Of course, a penalty. Hey, a block punt, a long punt return. They're going to have to uh, also, on each offensive try, try to strip the runner of the football and hope to turn it over on a fumble. It still has it. Tackle made back at the 18-yard line. Jimmy Peel covered up the play for the Buckeyes. He was not fooled at all. Interesting play by Hodson, faking to Fuller, then going outside, but a good way to perhaps isolate your quarterback and get him hurt. Big loss on the play. Ohio State only used up six seconds on that play, so perhaps the Buckeyes will have an opportunity to feel the punt. LSU's first two plays in this possession, eight up, let's see, a total of 13 seconds. Seven on the first play, six on the second. Buckeyes are out of timeouts. Ohio State has no timeouts remaining. Completion. 
Buckeye defensive unit playing tough and still aggressive in this ball game. Mike Sullivan from his nose tackle position stopped Fuller. Short yardage. Ohio State is now called timeout. It is 149 on the clock. Buckeyes will have to come up with another big effort on second down. And the Buckeyes still have some weapons left, which can turn this game into their favor. Of course, a penalty. Hey, a block punt, a long punt return. They're going to have to uh, also, on each offensive try, try to strip the runner of the football and hope to turn it over on a fumble. Hodgson still has it. Tackle made back at the 18-yard line. Jimmy Peel covered up the play for the Buckeyes. He was not fooled at all. Interesting play by Hodgson, faking to Fuller, then going outside, but a good way to perhaps isolate your quarterback and get him hurt. Big loss on the play. Ohio State only used up six seconds on that play, so perhaps the Buckeyes will have an opportunity to field the punt. LSU's first two plays in this possession, eight up, let's see, a total of 13 seconds. Seven on the first play, six on the second. Buckeyes are out of timeouts. Ohio State has no timeouts remaining. Shoes Hodson wants to throw. He throws it out of bounds. And LSU Paul has come unglued a little bit here in this possession. That is a very interesting play that was called from the sidelines by the LSU coaching staff. The one thing you want to do is run the clock down in this situation. LSU elected the pass, then throws an incompleted pass. That stops the clock. It gives the Buckeyes more than a minute, 38 seconds left. Also, it puts LSU in an equal disadvantage of a hole in that Ohio State has got 10 men on the line, and they undoubtedly will be going for the punt and having blocked one already. Well, those three LSU plays used just 18 seconds on the scoreboard clock. A delay of game penalty against LSU. So the Bengal Tigers will be set back five more yards. Now the only possibility here, but I can't see, they may elect to take a safety which would be a two-pointer. That's a very good observation, Paul. That and may, instead of risking trying to get the point punt off. That may have been their strategy a couple, three plays ago, setting up for the safety here. Let's see what happens. That would be a very smart move, a safety right here. Of course, they would get a free kick if they elect to take the safety. And there it is. Well, Paul Warfield figured that one out about two or three plays ahead of time. <laughs> so now the score is 29 for Ohio State, 33 for LSU. Buckeyes pick up two points on the safety, but are still in need of a touchdown. A field goal does no good. Well, of course, what that maneuver enables LSU to get a free kick, unmolested kick, and they'll be depending on their very fine punter. Bourgeois, who is uh, a 
Uh, who has a very strong leg to put Ohio State back on the other side of the field. Well, I'm sure Coach Mike Archer had that safety up his sleeve. Well, perhaps as early as second down. And certainly was a little bit mystifying when uh, the third down situation when Hodgson elected to go back to throw the football. I still think I would have elected to run the football, yeah. and run the clock down some more, and then perhaps make that decision to take the safety. But, of course, I'm up here, and uh, Coach Mike Archer is down on the sidelines, and he boasts a 12-1-1 and one record coming into this game, and I don't have a record in college football. <laughs> Thirty-three to twenty-nine, LSU by four. The Bengal Tigers led moments ago, thirty-three to twenty. The Buckeyes, of course, scored a touchdown, a point after, and a safety, which was given to them by LSU here in the last few minutes. And Bourgeois' punt goes to Olive at the thirty-three. The Bucks need a big return. Olive down the middle. He gets outside. <laughs> causing some excitement as he goes with this punt right up the middle first of all gets a block at that point now he's almost loses balance slides outside as lsu defenders overrun the play now he's on the outside and off to the races bryce and brown dyke after him rather bourgeois bryce rides him out of bounds but it's ohio state ball in good field position line of scrimmage the 38 of lsu buckeyes have a minute 24 no timeouts this is Fry, puffing it. Graham at the 24. He's out of bounds. Jeff Graham on the receiving end. <laughs> Jeff Graham has been the big play man here in the fourth quarter. Graham managed to get to the sideline and stop the clock in a minute 18. No, he wasn't out of bounds. Clock begins to move as the chain is advanced. Fry throws it short. Carla Snow, did he hold on? It might be to Ohio State's benefit to have that play rule to drop because the clock continues to run. It's down to 56, 55. Buckeyes did gain several yards. From the 20, movement along the line of scrimmage. Fry throwing over the middle, deflected and complete inside the 10. Trying to hit Ellis, who was down inside the 5. Third down and 7. You might as well say third and 20. Buckeyes have two problems here. They need a first down to keep the drive going, but they also need to get into the end zone because they're running out of time. 44 seconds to go. I was mistaken a few seconds ago. Graham did not get out of bounds. The clock was stopped momentarily when the first down chain was advanced. It stopped now at 44, and we'll begin with the snap from center. This is Fry shooting it. It is caught! broken loose here at Ohio Stadium as Fry hits Olive in the end zone. Buckeyes lead 35 to 33. Omoro's point after is on the way. It is good. Olive 
simply ran a post pattern over the middle. Fry hit him right on the numbers. Bobby Allen running a quick post pattern from left to right. Fry getting good protection. The throw is right on the money. Olive having to dive for a great catch simply. Great concentration. Holding on to the football. The official right there. Rules it a touchdown and the Buckeyes make a great, great comeback. Keep in mind, LSU has three timeouts remaining, 38 seconds to go. They're down by three. A field goal would tie. Boy, Bobby Olive, a big play guy in that last possession, Paul. Fine return on the punt following the safety, then the catch in the end zone to put the Bucks on top. Great return and simply great concentration. He had to make a sensational diving catch of that football going into the end zone. So two big plays by Bobby Olive in that last drive. Omoro bounces it down to the 18-yard line. It's returned back across the 30 to the 34. Darnell Williams was tackled by Brian Benio. We're down to 32 seconds. A miraculous comeback by Ohio State. Trailing in this game 33 to 20. Buckeyes were down 33 to 20 with just a few minutes left in this game. Here's Hobson throwing. It is dropped by Morris. John Sullivan in the area for Ohio State. Moss had it, couldn't hang on. Buckeye scored the touchdown, Paul, to cut the lead to 33-26 with just a little over four and a half minutes to go. In fact, they were still down to 13 with the four and a half minutes to go. Completion tackle! Zach Dumas makes the hit. LSU's got three timeouts, and they use one. 17 seconds to go. Hudson working again, getting good protection. He'll come underneath the coverage to his tight end, Halliburton. Halliburton makes the catch, but he is really smacked by Zach Dumas, who keeps him inbound, forcing LSU to use another one of their precious timeouts. <laughs> 17 seconds to go. The Buckeyes lead by three. Paul, before this game started, we said we were looking forward to a lot of exciting plays. I would say that uh, we've received our share of them and then some. Well, this is as exciting a ball game as one could witness. Good hard play on both sides. LSU finally getting the upper hand, but kind of getting the upper hand on a couple of deflected passes, a deflected interception that hurt Ohio State's chances, and then a, a, a deflected reception from the offensive side that took them in and put him 13 points up, but the Buckeyes never gave up. Hodgson's pass is incomplete. David Brown and Dwight Smith on the coverage. 13 seconds to go. That's Hodgson's number, 13. And he may be down to the last straw. Fourth down coming up. A miraculous comeback by the Buckeyes. 
who trailed with four and a half minutes to go in this game by a score of 33 to 20. Hodgson, one last gasp. It is nearly broken, almost intercepted, broken up by Vincent Clark. Seven seconds to go. The Buckeye coaching staff tickled to death, to say the least. Boy, they are happy. They have every right to be. That was one of the greatest comebacks that I've ever seen or witnessed in Ohio State Hooper. I mean, in history, Coach Cooper <laughs> waving he, the Cooper towel. And he is saluting the crowd, which was a very vital 12th man for Ohio State in the last few minutes, Paul. They never gave up. Certainly was, Jack, as the apparently last snap was taken but flag is on the play well if the big 10 season paul is gee half as good as this game was today we are in for a lot of excitement over the next uh, eight weeks there's no question about that but this ball game is very meaningful for ohio state they played one of the best teams in the country come from behind played them toe-to-toe -to -toe. All ball game, gave them a lead, spotted them a lead, early part of the third, fourth quarter, and came from behind. A truly great comeback by Ohio State. Buckeyes are seven seconds from knocking off the highly touted LSU Bengal Tigers. Ohio State falls on it. And it's Bedlam here at Ohio Stadium. The field is covered by Scarlet Shirt and Buckeye fans. Buckeye head coach John Cooper says hats off to the crowd. The scoreboard clock shows two seconds, but I think this game is history. They did expend that final timeout, which kind of makes it academic, but the, the fans and their excitement ran onto the field, and as the officials indicated, there are two seconds remaining. a penalty. LSU can't stop the clock anymore. Gil Marchman starts it up. Two seconds kickoff. And for a second time, Ohio Stadium is flooded with scarlet-shirted Buckeye fans who relish this come-from-behind victory over LSU, 36-33. We'll see you next week when the Big Ten starts right here at Ohio Stadium. The Buckeyes take on Illinois. Many thanks to Jim Henderson, our spotter. Steve Bassford on statistics. 
for Paul Warfield. Jack Kramer saying so long from Ohio Stadium. The Buckeyes have upset LSU 36-33.